to go live. I need to put a countdown on that. Um, there we are. We're on. And then I'm just going to put the 30 second countdown on in a in a bit. And that'll give people at least a minute or something to uh, to come in. It'll be really interesting to see what's, uh, uh, what happens. Oh, there we go. Let's put... Let's put Hey everyone, it's the bird emergency, it's a deep dive with Ricky Coglin. I'm Grant, I'm a bird nerd. Ricky's, oh hang on, let's do that. Oh actually I think if you angle your thumb like that Ricky, that's bad isn't it? So I think aren't, aren't there some oh, secret, sure about that, secret I mean, hand signals and whatnot that yeah, you're not supposed to do? I'm not across that stuff, um, no. Uh, me either, obviously. Um Hello, everyone. Again, sorry for that clumsy introduction. I am so out of practice, Ricky. It's <laughs> it's three months about since I've done this, and I've been doing this like day after day after day for years, and then cold turkey. Oh, I've got a comment from oh, someone. Oh. Uh, Hello, you... Stormy H two Rider. Nice to see you. I'm glad you glad you got the notification. Um, excellent that you have um, jumped in. Let's see. Let's see who still remembers us while we um, are waffling on today, Ricky. Now, Stormy, um, because you're here, I can talk to you and you alone. Um, we're sort of spitballing a bit today because we want to talk about what Ricky and I have in mind for our regular deep dive, and it's going to be a bit different to what we'd been doing uh, before, a bit more interactive, and we have to fit it around Ricky working with the the animals. Like, Ricky's like the modern-day Gerald Durrell, and... <laughs> that uh, He started... What's that? The... the, uh, the the Durrell Trust, that's in Jersey, isn't it, Ricky? Is this the old um, Wild Kingdom people? <laughs> my, um, my family and other animals, catch me a colobus. I'm pretty sure he started the, the, the zoo at, at, uh, on, on Jersey, which is like the Durrell Foundation, which does amazing conservation work. Um but I, yeah. I read his books when I was a very young fellow. But anyway, the point of waffling on like that is when Ricky's not being uh, Ricky from Aussie Wild and the, uh, and, and the little brown bird expert author and, uh, uh, and illustrator, uh, Ricky's, a, Ricky's a zookeeper. How cool <laughs> no, no, I'm an educator. I'm an educator oh. at a zoo. Oh, come on. It's a broad it's term. Anyone who works at a zoo... Is a oh zookeeper. yeah, everyone, everyone yeah. calls me a zookeeper when I'm at the zoo, except yeah. zookeepers and the educators and yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, but Ricky's day gig is um, is working at the Sydney Zoo, and let and let's um, uh, let's clarify for people too, Ricky. Sydney <laughs> Zoo is not Taronga Zoo. No, no, no. Taronga is the um the classic old original. Pretty much original Sydney Zoo. Um, On the harbour. Beginnings, yeah, yeah, it did have its beginnings around Moore Park, over that way. But um, around about the turn of the century, it shifted over to the um, over to the current site there at um, beautiful Taronga and uh, Taronga Park there at Mossman. Uh, I work out at um, Eastern Creek. Is, is where the zoo I work at. It's only been um, 
around for about four years. In fact, it opened just a couple of months before COVID hit. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, um, I really like that it's at Eastern Creek because it's like famous for uh, uh, speedway and race cars. Yeah, motor racing, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, <laughs> and how far is Eastern Creek from where the new airport's going in? Not sure. Um, I think it's a fairly, fairly good distance away from yeah. there. Yeah, I don't think the aircraft are going to be an issue. Though, we, though any aircraft is always a problem for the meerkats. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> they're sitting up there and they'll give their little wolf a bark and they'll all run down under their little, into their you know, hideaway holes. And, yeah, fabulous little things. Um, yeah. Now, here we go. This is what we like, audience participation. Um, so H2 Rider and also known as Stormy from... Uh, from another social handle. Um, about 20 k's from Stormy's place, and Stormy's at Parramatta. Well, so, it's about 50 k's from where I live. <laughs> um, so, I drive 100 k's a day when I go to work. Ricky, since we're sort of talking about the geography of Sydney a little bit, just mm -hmm. explain mm -hmm. how how the the habitat, the landscape at at Sydney Zoo in Western Sydney mm -hmm. is different to where you are in okay. Eastern Sydney and you're in like the the, the beachy part of, part of uh, Sydney, not the harbour part of Sydney. No, no, I'm in, I'm in the Shire. I'm, um, I'm pretty much in Cronulla. I live in a little tiny patch called Woolaware which we, is the local Darawals people's term for a muddy track, which is kind of funny because it's um, probably one of the more um, upmarket areas in the Shire. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's sort of I'm positioned right between Botany Bay and Port Hacking and um, it's... Uh, um, yeah, considerably different kind of landscape here than to what we get out uh, in the uh, at Eastern Creek area. That air, that part of Sydney is Darawal country, and uh, it's basically it's the Western Sydney Castle Ray forests of that locality, and uh, these are unique forests. And unfortunately, most of the development. Um, in recent decades, um, in the uh, Sydney, you know, as Sydney has expanded, uh, has just completely eaten up those forests and reserves, and that they are extremely threatened. There's only small patches of them remaining. None are virgin growth. Uh, they have all regrown, so um, there is nothing original left, though. You can still go out there occasionally and get birds like speckled warblers and, you know, and, and it's it's very much a west meets east arrangement where you'll get birds come down from the mountains or even over the ranges and sometimes drop in. But you can still get regent honey eaters in the area. Um, yeah, there were two reported um, near Windsor a couple of weeks ago, um, which I don't think came up on eBird and I didn't shout out about it. Um, <clears throat> oh, I I didn't see it, but I've been having a bit of a um, social media break. So, so if anyone was wondering where I've been, that's been it. I really felt burned out from social media. Oh, I have I have all but abandoned social media. I I only now go there to post and sometimes say hello. I I wouldn't spend more than five minutes on all social media on any one day and probably, you know, and I can go several days without being there, but I'm trying to sort of like promote my business a little bit, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my bird watching and, business and still be on there and my book and so many things. Now, shortly we're going to talk about one of the innovations that you've got um, coming up in your business, which we oh. will plug mercilessly now, uh, which is Aussie Wild Tours. Um so we'll be forever talking about what Ricky's got coming up there, apart from being a uh, an educator at a zoo. Let's not 
let's not keep making the mistake. Someone at the, at the zoo will get mad, or someone who's a zookeeper will is get that, butt she's hurt. Not the and, zookeeper. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You go, mm, mm, she mm. does no, she does no sweeping or raking at all. That's right. <laughs> she wants to work. I don't see her dragging around bales of hay. Um, yeah, by yeah. the way, by the way, Ricky. Um, there we go. I'm oh, going yes. to point. I'm going to point out what's yes. Hmm. Uh, the referendum date has been announced, and no. I am proudly putting it out there that my vote will be. Well, I won't actually. It's not really casting a vote, is it? Because you have to write yes in a box, so you're making a choice, and that's the choice I'll be making. Also, um, I think I think I can safely say. Let's get this right. Uh, do I qualify as an ally, Ricky, over over that side? Oh, could, um, <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 if you're not one, get lost. Okay, uh, <laughs> turfs, uh, no turfs allowed. There we go. Look at that. Good on you, Stormy. Okay, uh, Stormy, since you're here and it looks like you're um, you're going to be very very much into um, giving us some input because this is like. We we have to we had to do a bit more planning about um, what Ricky and I will be uh, doing as we go forward. Uh, hello, also the next uh, more people on YouTube. Hello, hello, nice to see. Um, uh, yeah, Stormy, oh, uh, good on you. That's like Michael Long's long walk and walking together, and Pat Farmer. So many people who um, uh, are publicly <coughs> expressing their support. Well, I look at it this way, and I, I did tweet this this morning, that um, we will have, we, it will be the year 60,202 or three, roughly, before we have been living on this land for as long as Indigenous people had been living here prior to colonisation. The year six, we are in the year 2023. It's like we got 60,200. Before That's we right, have, we? you know, Star Trek, the, Captain Kirk will have lived and died. <laughs> no, it's, uh... <laughs> yeah, it's um, that is a long, long time. When you look at it that way, 60,202 AD, a long time. These people have been for a long time. And I, if the Minerals Council of Australia can have a voice to Parliament with exclusive closed door access, so can the traditional custodians of this land. Yep, yep, that's uh, uh, that's my view too. That and all is... the people who are saying, oh, they'll get special access. Hey, if you don't think that there's bunches of people who already get special access, you're a, you're an idiot. If they'll um, get special access, good. <laughs> that's that's <right>. <laughs> good. That's, that's exactly right. But like, but um, like the same crowd who are saying like, oh, this is a very, very expensive waste of time. Uh, many of them were the people who sold us the, um, the the postal vote on whether gay people or you know same sex attracted people were you know regular human beings not too many years ago, and deserved to like marry. Precisely. Uh, yeah. Hi Naomi. Naomi's just given us some love on Facebook. Um, hello, hello Naomi. It's great to have you back. Um, I've I've missed all my uh, all my regular friends in the. Uh, uh, in the uh, uh, oh. yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Let's look. This is going to be very, 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 very slop, sloppy and slack. What we it's just very sketchy do, so far. I have to say. Yeah, that's right. Well, we ha well. I haven't <laughs> even got to the first <laughs> thing. I haven't um, even got to the first thing on my list, Ricky. Yeah, and uh, we haven't is... really we haven't really fully described the situation in Sydney with the Castlereagh Forest out west. Here on the coast, we've got a lot of coastal heath. Uh, some taller, wetter forests. We get pockets of rainforest. Um, we get um, we get a great diversity here of vegetation um, uh, because the, the landscapes or the topography is much more um, uh, diverse, and uh, it is and the soils are different too because there is um, a lot more narrow bean shale. Um, closer up into the surface in Western Sydney. So that was also going to give you a different, you know, botanical composition out there. And uh, hence different birds. So you get, yeah, you can go out there and get some very interesting birds. 
Right, you won't get wee bills, for instance, as a general rule, on the coastal strip. You've got to go out into that castle way patch to get them. Speaking um, of wee bills, I mean, <clears throat> I, 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 see, I just don't see many of them down here where 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 I live in uh, in the northwest of Melbourne. But by jinkos, I had no idea how uh, common they could be in in habitats where where they really like it and in that central north queensland uh you know northwest queensland they were just everywhere and they are cool and what a what a great call it wasn't one that i was really familiar with so um yeah uh wendy hayes hello thank you for the like on facebook too by the way we uh we get a few in western sydney but if you really want to get numbers of them pretty easily for me it's just I go to Cape Tea Valley. So yeah. I just head up in the mountains and up I go. And, and you can probably get them between the, you know, there and Western Sydney, but if you go to the Cape Tea Valley, it's just an, it's an easy place to bird and go and get them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At least for people who are not locals to the mountains. <clears throat> um, now, let, 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 me talk, let me talk, Ricky, about the... Um, uh, oh, this... Uh, Stormy, or H2 Rider, mm -hmm. Stormy, thank you for that comment. What's your um, area, uh, uh, Stormy? Parramatta. Oh, that's right, Parramatta. Parramatta. Oh, so, oh well, uh, they, well, they are. They're having a big year. Um, <clears throat> I, I actually heard, uh, this would be nearly two weeks ago, I heard some spotted partalites here calling to each other. Now, I, I only heard them for... Uh, uh, for one day. Here we go. I'm getting schooled. Uh, Toon Gabby oh, right. is the Parramatta area, but it's for, it's further up the river, isn't it? So it's a little bit it's a little bit further out than yeah. Parramatta City, right? So it's getting did I get that geography Melbourne. right? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, Toon Gabby, Toon Gabby by the river by the Parramatta. It's better birding at Toon Gabby than Parramatta, I'm sure. I, yeah, I would have, I would have thought so, but better. Um, Better kebabs in uh, in <laughs> Parramatta than in Toon Gabby, I would imagine. There we are, Northwest. I'm getting school. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, Stormy would be Stormy would be someone who who would be fairly familiar, I imagine, with Castlereagh Reserve and Wianamata Reserve and those fabulous birding places. So, yeah. Now we're we're going to make the bird watching deep dive a lot more interactive than we have done previously. And one of the things that we're going to talk about, and you kind of led us there, even though you didn't mean to, Ricky, was we're going to talk about some of the really cool rare bird alerts that pop up around the world. And, of course, you noticed you mentioned just <coughs> about um, Regent honey eaters um, popping up in people's gardens and being... Um, uh, being recorded. So what we're going to do is have a little scour of the rare bird alerts from uh, the time intervening, intervening our um, uh, our deep dives. And of course, everyone, they're going to have to fit in around when Ricky has to do zoo stuff, right? Um, so we want to talk to either people who have put in rare bird alerts or people who might have seen some of the rare birds and we want to then expand that out to what's been cool in your area. Uh, Ricky, that little segment, we workshop two names, right? Mm -hmm. um, so if, if, you are, if you're very delicate and you don't like swear words, now's the time to turn your volume down because we're going to road test them. Um, and it's coming up to finals finals time. And anyone who's as old as me will remember one of the AFL commentators would always go, you beauty, whenever there was a big mark or something. So that's one potential name for the segment. And the other one is, Ricky, will you say it or will I say it? What was it? Was it fucking Ripper? You fucking ripper! It's when you get out there and you see a fucking ripper of a bird. I want to so, say you beauty. 
<laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's much nicer. Um, g'day, Martin. How are you? Nice to uh, uh, nice to see you again. Um, and Naomi, look, and we're all about getting everyone involved too. Uh, oh, okay. right. A question about caper tea. Yeah. Um, Do you want to read that tea. one out? Yeah. Uh, well, the question is, hi, Ricky, caper tea. I heard it was difficult because it was a lot of private land now. Have I been misinformed? Um, <clears throat> caper tea... Still, you can still go to all the classic spots in Cape of Tea. Um, I'm kind of lucky because the, the, the lovely people that I uh, rent accommodation off when I go up there or run my tours up there, um, they give me access to their property and it's got everything on it. It is an amazing stretch of property and you can, you can go and bird there for two days and just get a completely different avifauna each day. Um, so many speckled warblers and hooded robins and turquoise parrots and all the goodies you go up there for, um, including regents, I'm told. Um, I'm, I'm up there uh, in uh, early September if I can put together a crew that want to come up. <coughs> um, uh, but, yeah, you know, your Crown Station um, Reserve Road, your Crown Station Road, um, your... your, your um, around and behind the church and cemetery there at Glen Alice are classics and you can still go up behind what we used to call the yellow house and go birding and along that trail it's just so full of yellow tufted honey eaters and so many finches and other beauties. It's, it's, a, it's still a, a great location to go birding and uh, so, yeah, there's plenty to be done there but, yes, it, it is going to be a little bit better if you can get access to some of those properties. Um, there was another one down on a creek. I can't remember the name of it offhand. I can never remember the name of it. Um, but it's a place where I know that there are, you know, region honey eaters are reliable to be uh, nesting there. And, uh, yeah, they've blocked that off now. We were there some years ago doing a planting and uh, I got them and plenty of southern whiteface too, but they've, they've blocked it off, which is kind of sad because southern whiteface is one of my favourite birds. <sighs> Another so one. a bit of good and a bit of bad um, up there in KBT, but still definitely a place worth going to the bird. Yeah, and um, and I, I guess if you are going to anywhere, this is something that I um, I would put more effort into nowadays. Would be reaching out to anyone that you can find who's a local birder, reaching out to them before you go, getting acquainted, and sort of asking people. Um, are there places that you can get onto if you, are, you know, ask in advance and make yourselves known to landowners? And a lot of people, if they know you're only coming to look at birds and not cut up the tracks and, you know, do some radical four-wheel driving or whatever, they're, they're happy to let you go on and have a look at the birds. And a lot of people are really, really want to know what the birds are that live around them. Lot of, you've got to remember a lot of people who have significant land holdings uh, they like birds but they don't know what they are they don't know yeah. what types are living them up <coughs> and and they like to learn i must admit i have encountered sadly on social media some locals who are um less than favorable to anything to do with the world of nature um, yeah well that's going to be the same uh the same sort yeah. of everywhere. So you're, you're going to meet both types in the Cape of Tea. There's some wonderful people up there and many of them who've, you know, opened their properties up to tree planting days where there is so much, you know, this for, for decades now to get um, uh, to get uh, planting up there and restore some region honey eater habitat. It's a desperate thing. Yeah, and, and there mm -hmm. also is that, um, that friction between if, you know, if, if some landowners find that they've got something rare, endangered or unique on their property, they're fearful that uh, the greenies will come along and want to lock it up, you know. So, oh, yeah, uh, yeah. so, there, so there's weird. always that, that, yeah, there's <clears> always <throat> that friction. And I think we've got to reach out more to people and share what we know and help them to um, uh, become interested in what some... Um, what we're into. Yeah, well, um, it's, it's, it's potentially a money-making thing. And, uh, oh, hi, Vicky. Um, yeah, it's, uh, 
Yeah, it's potentially a money-making thing. If you've got, um, for instance, the people who um, I, I rent a place off and who have this lovely property, um, they, when you, they, you rent these lovely little cottages, you go in there and there's a lot of birdie stuff in there and, you know, pamphlets about bird trails and signs about all the birds of the area and that kind of thing. And um, it's they've got a beautiful big old cottage up on their property that I'm trying to convince them to return to, you know, something where people can come and stay there and they have bird hides just built around it because you know, the bird's just crazy on the property. The property's called Courageon and um, oh, it's just superb. Well, just we might know. Uh, yeah. Um. We might need to reach out to them and... Um, well, yeah, I mean, if anyone, yeah, I can probably somehow pull together the details for people who want to book to go up there and they can possibly talk to them about if they book their place, um, visiting their property. They may be amenable to that kind of thing. And that's okay. that's definitely an extra place to go. And if we're up there for a weekend, we'll hit that twice, um, as well as the church and um, a couple of other locations on the hills around the valley, on the sides of the slopes there. And uh, we always do Crown Station Road because it's always so good. You always get lots of beauties there. You are going to do beauty um, very frequently when you're walking on that road. You beauty. There we go. Got, got the, to raise got the mug. Cocky mug. Someone, yeah. uh, someone did message me um Recently, and asked me if I still had the cocky mug. Yes. <coughs> hmm. Okay, so let let let's just catch up, um, Vicky, and any of the other. There's some more people who have come in since we started. What we're going to do with bird watching deep dive? It, we're going to make it more interactive and um, sort of focusing more on some of those highlights that that people are seeing or have made known that they've scene so we're going to be looking at rare bird alerts and and depending on how much time we've got maybe checking out some of the hot spots on um on ebird or something and seeing what people have been checking out and certainly in ricky's loca locality and my locality but we want to use it as a forum for all of you as well to submit uh your you beauty or your fucking ripper from your patch um to me uh in, in in between our our shows and perhaps you would like to join us on on the screen in the studio as they say in the remote studio and talk about your rippers and they don't have to be the ones you saw last week you can you know we can hark back to well, I'm going to hark back to the the spot that I went to just out of Mount Isa, where eBird and some of the other blogs said, "Yeah, you'll find a painted finch there." Yeah, I went in, found a painted finch, found a pile of painted finches, um, and they have that habit. Anyone who's never seen one somewhere, when you disturb them, they fly just far enough so you can't make them out, even with your binoculars. You can see movement in the grass, but you can't see the birds. Anyway, I did get a good look at a pair that were doing lovey-dovey things in a shrub just um, off the side of the track. So that was great. But I did see painted finches, but on the way out that day, I saw a pair of hooded robins getting uh, getting frisky as well, just obviously doing pair, bond pair bonding stuff. So that was super cool. Now, hooded robins aren't the most amazing bird to see anywhere but seeing them pairing up and doing robin things was amazing it was fantastic uh, well, they're, they're very, I, I would consider them a very um desirable bird um ricky how can i get information for your trip for september please um you can visit um aussiewild.com.au and, and um, I'm just seeing if I've still got your. Uh, uh, I, I I usually don't um, don't delete any of these uh, things I have up here, the little banners. So I'm just looking for your Aussie Wild one, but I can't. Uh, 
Oh, here, here, here it is. There we are. Go there. AussieWild.com.au. And in a moment, we're going to talk about one of Ricky's newest, oh, yeah. uh, uh, newest <clears throat> things that we'll also be talking about. Um, oh, now Vicky's got some got some more news too. Wow, Just returned from the Gold Coast. And oh, oh, Vicky, I have to tell you, the whole trip I did with Millie, we were trying to find the beach stone curly. We didn't get it. We got plenty of bush stone curlers. I can tell you that bush stone curlers love broccoli, raw broccoli. Well, they were. Oh, I've got so many stories about bush stone curlers coming close, and they are that they're they're just like in some parts caravan parks in in some parts of Australia. They're just like the tamest birds you can ever. Uh, you can never see. That's it's cool. them and the possible birds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, oh, the possible birds are amazing. Uh, I've got so many new favourite birds, it's just not mm. funny. Uh, Eastern curlers too. Hey, that's really cool. So where else? Um, so all the curlers. Oh, Stormy's, Stormy's into it already. Um, so these are recent highlights from Toon Gab- the Toon Gabby area. Toon Gabby. Uh, you've got to tell us more, Stormy, about the king parrots because I would have thought that you would normally, well, you could expect to see king parrots in in the right habitat there, but are they unusual there? Um, so give us a bit more detail on that, and maybe do do you want to jump into the into the studio and um, uh, and tell us more? I mean that that's going to be the other. Other thing, you're all um, you're all welcome to jump in and um, and get involved. And how we can do that? I'm just going to copy this. Um, uh, there, we are. there we are. You can um, you can copy. You can use that link and. Um, and it can bring you into the um, studio if you want to. If you want to <laughs> come on with your uh, uh, with your camera and 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 tell us. Um, okay, let's see. What else did we have here? Um, oh, Murray. Murray's already in. All right, let's uh, let's go. Let's bring Murray in. How are you, Murray? I'm just fun and bad like that now. Uh, <laughs> There we are. Let, let's get Murray on here. Uh, oh, I'll take him off mute. Oh, Murray, you've got your your uh, mic muted. You unmute yourself. Go down to settings down the bottom and audio, and you'll see that you, you have your mic muted. Um, so if you go down to settings at the bottom of your screen and click on audio, you'll have to make sure you, your mic yeah, is that's on. Good. Yeah. Keep talking, Murray, and we'll see. Oh, I think you're right now, but now yeah, I can't I, hear you. There we are. There we are. Unmuted. Yeah, there yeah. he is. He's on. Okay. Let's let let's get Murray. Let, let's do the whole thing. Let's do this. Okay, Murray, get your head closer to the to the camera and and your mic, and tell us what's your latest one. Hi, by the way. Hi. Oh, we can uh, we can make Murray big. There we are, and us little. I oh, know. Let's um. We got to make Murray big. How do I do that? Oh, I know. Hi oh, guys. There you go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Got a okay. spotted parlor in the background. Yeah, it's very, very, nice. very, very nice. Nesting at your place, Murray? Uh, not at my place, but um, the 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 yellowtail the. Australian king parrots are about uh, three or four k's from my house, and we have a, a big uh... oh, we have a big whoops <laughs> we're getting lag I think there yeah big, bit of so, a you, so you said you have a big what tree yeah yeah. And is it a eucalypt? 
Yeah, a, a eucalypt tree with a, a nest hollow in it that the Australian king parrots are nesting. Oh. Yes, and a, a eucalypt. So you've got the nesting nesting pretty much on your property? It's about 3K from my house sort of thing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's super cool, isn't it? Um, we're getting... We're going, oh, what, what's happening? Sorry. Sorry, I'm still practicing. I'm getting back to getting back to there so that we all look a bit better. There we are. You might need I'm to. I'm very uh, lucky with my local parrots. I've, I've at the moment I've got king parrot, um, not king parrot, sorry, crimson rosellas and eastern rosellas nesting. One on, I live near a railway track and on one side of the track, about 50, 50, 60 metres from my home, I've got crimson rosellas nesting in a park and a park on the other side of the railway, I've got eastern rosellas and they both visit the bush right outside my window um, every day. That's bloody... Just, it is pretty damn good. So they're two of the most beautiful parrots in the world, but unfortunately we don't get king parrots too. I'm I'm jealous. I mean, where I am, no rosellas, no king oh. parrots. <laughs> oh. um, yeah, we we just don't get them. But uh, Highland, we one, well, um, I had to travel a long, long way before I got to see a pale-headed rosella. I couldn't believe they just weren't. I wasn't finding them anywhere. Did you get um, Did you get blue bonnets anywhere? Um, too far north for them. No, no, too far north. Uh, Clon Curries we got, and and twenty uh, eights or Australian Ringnecks. So, so we got the Clon Curry and the uh, and the twenty eight variety. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, when when we were at Lee Point, um, Northern Rosella. That was that was one of the absolute. They're lovely. Yeah, yeah, really lovely bird. Yeah. Um, did you get hooded robins? Did you pop down to, um, I can't remember the name of the place offhand, but it's out, sort of near the turn off to Kakadu there from that highway, oh, no, Stuart no, Highway, no. Stuart no. Highway. Yeah, you can stop in a little town there and get hooded parrots. Oh, you know, no, we, I, I, don't, I don't know if Millie did when she went down to Litchfield or, any, or anything, but no, we just, uh, we just drove direct from Catherine to Darwin and and my experience of Darwin was um, uh, was at the camp at uh, at Lee Point where it did see a couple of Gordians, um, which was exciting. Um, what else was exciting there? There was there was lots of marsh finches. Uh, that was nice too. Um, but yeah, I was only there a few days, and then Mitch, who I will be inviting. Um, uh, onto the show soon. Uh, Mitch, who had been living in East Timor and is the first person and basically discovered a parrot finch, an undiscovered parrot finch, when he was out taking photos of butterflies and came across a parrot finch and photographed it. And it was at that point. New species. Undescribed, exactly. Yep. So, yeah, so so that's a story that's coming up uh, sometime soon. So good on you, Mitch. Mitch took me bird watching to one of the parks, and I can't remember the name, Big Park, um, uh, in Darwin. And oh, we had a great time there. Jeriganies and Arafura fantails and... Just... Did, you go to the, did you go to the park and get the, um, the Rufus Owl? Oh yes, we did get the Rufus owls at mm -hmm. um, at the Cairns Botanical Garden, a yeah. botanic garden, yeah. and they were exactly where we were told they would be. Did take a little bit of time to find them, but they're in uh, like a, a Potocarpus tree, I think it was. Um, <laughs> and luckily, I knew what a Potocarpus was, so we knew where to look. But yeah, they were they were hard to find. Um, uh, Heard lots and lots of barking owls. That was great. I mean, I uh, just too many, just too many cool things to sort of talk talk yeah. about in in one thing. But what what I did notice, and oh, and actually, let me get another add in too. Um, Monday with Holly returns on Monday with Holly. Funnily enough, um, 
Uh, and if you, you don't know, Holly, awesome. <laughs> yeah. and if you don't know, Holly is the Dr. Holly Parsons, the Urban Birds Program Manager at BirdLife Australia, and we we get together often and talk about urban birds. And obviously, it's a long time since Holly and I have um, been chatting. Um, I've asked Holly to look up the bird data that she's got access to to see if we can find the first time the spotted dove was recorded in Cairns. Because I thought I thought the spotted dove was sort of restricted down to sort of the southeast and wouldn't be up in the tropics. Bloody hell, I couldn't believe how common they were in Cairns. Freaked me out. Um, and there are... <laughs> It was nice not to see starlings up there or blackbirds, but the common miner is everywhere. Um, it's just encroaching. Oh, yeah. Miners, so. What is lovely, though, when you get out over the ranges is, and especially you would have gone through Camerwheel, that is the, oh, yeah. <laughs> the house sparrow <laughs> capital of Australia. Uh, oh, yeah, well, it's yeah. got to be the capital of something. Um because uh, it's a good place for a ginger beer when you come across the what's it the the, the pub oh, the, 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 no, the Camelwood Hotel. Yeah, 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 it's a great uh, it's a great hotel. I don't drink beer or I don't drink alcohol, but it's a great place to stop for a lemonade or a ginger beer for me. We we did have um, we did have dinner at the Camelwood Hotel because because there's not much at Camelwood. Uh, uh, what did we see? Lots of Pratt and Coles. So that was where we started to notice lots of um, Australian Pratt and Coles. Were they across the Barkley Ranges? So going, you were going west, and you started getting Pratt and Coles along there. Yeah, I think um, that would be right. I I can't think exactly where they started, where we started seeing them flushing from the sides <laughs> of the road. I think we started actually we started seeing them around Normanton. Georgetown or Normanton, um, uh, just yes, flushing from the sides of the roads. Um, mm. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, now, Murray, since you uh, since you're here, what else have you been seeing that has tickled your fancy? <laughs> uh, well, we've had the uh, eastern rosellas uh, recently. Um, we've got hundreds of galahs in the area and uh, rainbow lorikeets they're both the two popular um parrots as such but uh we've got galahs nesting in natural tree hollows and we've got rosellas uh, ra uh sorry rainbow lorikeets nesting in natural tree hollows as well have you got scalies at your place Yes, we've got two lorikeets, the scaly breasted lorikeet and the rainbow lorikeet. Are you getting musk lorikeets out there? No. Sure. Well, it's very interesting. You, you, you definitely get them around Eastern Creek um, and uh, any schools around East, around that area, around the, the Blacktown and the greater Blacktown sort of area because um, I visit schools too out there with my work at the zoo and... Um, We've got, always got lo lots of lovely big trees and they're stacked with uh, musk lorikeets. Uh, so, uh, yeah, very interesting, I, but no scalies. I saw a couple of muskies in a mixed group with rainbow lorikeets yesterday uh, in a really nice, large eucalyptus leucoxalan rosea, like the uh, uh, pink-flowered uh, gum. Uh, that's early for for them to to be here. They're usually here uh, a bit later in spring and and over the summer when when everything is um, uh, is in flower. Um, Murray, well, they, tell us. They move onto the coast around Sydney when the uh, swamp mahoganies are in flower. So round about. Any time from you know, March, April, May, they start to build up in numbers and they're starting to thin out now in my area. Yeah, I, I was going to mention <clears throat> they're usually a blossom migrant, the, the oh, musky. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. so um, the middle, so, very much. so they'll ebb and flow um now murray i'm going to ask you another question and then i'm going to bump you off because i think we might uh, uh, i might be able to get another commenter in in a minute um are you are you maintaining a house list or a patch list at your place, Mary? I've got a, um, a list of, say, 80 birds that I've ID'd, but um, there's probably a couple in there that are a bit uh, dodgy. But, um, <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> let, let, can't, let, can't, let, can't let you go without talking about that. What? Because this is a really interesting uh, point, I reckon, when, if you reckon it's a bit dodgy, that means you're not confident with your ID, right? No, I'm confident with the ID, but the bird was probably an escape pet rather than... Oh, okay. A, a okay. Well, that, okay. So, oh, that's... so I had a cockatiel in the park chased by noisy miners or okay. other birds at the time, but, you know, but I've actually seen it, but... But one of the other interesting birds is uh, you mentioned the house sparrow. I haven't yep. really seen any. Uh, I've had one sighting in about two to three years, basically. So they're very rare in my area. Wow. Yeah. I've got to get I'd it. Really seek them out in a few discrete patches where I live too. If I want to see a house sparrow, it's not like Melbourne. Well, at my part of Melbourne is a little bit unusual. It's just my little neighbourhood, I reckon, where if I... W actually, exactly where I live, house sparrows are the most common. But on my dog walk route, um, sort of over the back, there's a, a, a group of maybe, uh, maybe 10 or 15 houses and a block of flats where the tree sparrows dominate. Tree sparrows, ah. tree sparrows, tree sparrows. So I got some noisy in Melbourne Zoo about two weeks ago, and I got a mixture of house and tree sparrows there. Yeah, yeah, you'll mm. you'll often see the mix mixed groups, but tree sparrows are usually the least um, uh, least numerous. But good luck anyone who can confidently tell a male, ah, uh, sorry, a female tree sparrow or house sparrow apart when they're just flying past. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm not familiar enough with them. You can pick a male pretty easily. Yeah. Probably the patches. No yeah. 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 Well, the, well, I mean, the the house sparrow's got the grey top of the head, and the uh, and the uh, tree sparrow's got the lovely chestnut cap. So beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, another bird that I had recently in another park near here was called the buff banded rail. Oh, uh, fantastic! Yeah. Um, so that that's about two k's from here, sort of. Yeah, so it's good to get them. Lovely bird, really lovely. Yeah, beautiful bird. Yeah. One of those sort of um, designed by committee birds. <laughs> like the colour scheme's quite, you know, it's eclectic. I'm, I'm just trying to remember where it was. It was um, at the lake to the west of Mount Isa, and I can't remember the name of it now. Uh, but yeah, I saw the uh, saw the buff banded rail just hanging out there. Um, that was a nice surprise. Uh, um, oh, black bitten, just black bitten, black bitten too. By the way, um, all right. Ma so, Murray, is there um, anything else you want to tell us about that you've seen recently, or do you want to save it up for the uh, uh, the next bird watching deep dive, which um, which I will just tell you to now will be on. Where Tuesdays are going to be our regular day. And it's going to be on the fifth. So, and I'll actually be um, be promoting stuff as of this week. So, we'll be back to me annoying the bejesus out of everyone on social media. Uh, oh, Murray, straw poll too. Um, uh, are you are you working? Are you using um, X, the former? Formerly known as uh, Twitter, uh, a little bit, yes. A little bit, yeah. I'm, I'm contemplating getting right off it because it's very hard to, um, it's very hard to continue to be associated and support in any way 
Mr. Frico uh, must go. So, uh, yeah, so I'll probably be moving nearly all of my efforts onto other platforms. Are you on threads, Murray? No. Okay. Not yet. What, um, so but you're obviously on. you're using YouTube, so that's right. I would like to tell everyone, please make sure you're following me on YouTube because a lot more emphasis will be going onto YouTube uh, than any of the other platforms. Um, although Threads is being very nice to the bird emergency, and I'm seeing lots of bird people on Threads, so maybe we'll really? we'll yeah maybe we'll keep Instagram. And threads is like the instant messenger kind of thing. And I'll probably be doing a lot more stuff on the YouTube shorts as well as YouTube because there's a possibility of actually making uh, making a nice community around, uh, around threads, I think. Um, oh, gee, hello all the new people on Facebook. That's good. And hello Twitch too, I might add. There's some Twitchies coming in, so... Uh, that was good. Yeah, so, so I'm on Facebook under my own name, so you can find yeah. me there. And I've probably got, uh, I've got an album of probably 1,300 bird images of recent sightings and things like that. Um, can you, because I don't do a lot of Facebook, but I will go and check my message and everything. Can you um, just hit me up on Facebook and and give me a link to that if you um, and we can maybe talk about your photography um, at, at greater length on, on another day if you're up for that sounds great yes, it does sound good So right, I'll, well, if, I'll, I'll email you a, a link to my Facebook great, great. Um, do that folder or whatever yeah. yep, yep, do that and, um, and then we'll organise to um uh, to get you in and maybe to be part of a photography Friday. That might be good. Sounds okay. Okay. Ripper. All right. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Murray. And, and look, let's let the secret out of the bag. Murray is H2 Rider and Stormy. <laughs> so That's you didn't get... <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't get the consistent name on all the, uh, on all the socials. So... Yeah. Uh, yeah so. Oh, cool. Okay, well, if you don't mind, I'm going to boot you out of here and I'm going to um, uh, ask Kevin if he would like to join in. I'm going to put his comment up in a minute and we'll um, uh, we'll maybe have a have a chin wag with Kevin. Um, can I, can oh, I ask can... any, anyone out there if they've ever seen a superb fairy wren building a nest in a tree around about six metres up, maybe six? Maybe seven metres up. Because that's um, what I'm seeing I have found uh, the other day in Royal National Park. And it's like, I've never seen that ever. I've only ever seen them building nests pretty much almost on the ground or just, you know, within a metre of the ground. And this one's yeah. like up in a tree in a fork and they're creating the same little ball. Now this is where we want Kylie Soans or Joe Welkland or or Holly Kirk to be uh, uh, to be on with us, or even Holly Holly Parsons might even be able to tell us about that. Because uh, I have no, if there must be a record of it. Yeah, well there we are. Naomi hasn't seen one that far up. Uh, okay, let's um, let's put that on the back burner for a minute. Um, uh, now, now, Kevin, I just saw Kevin has just said he doesn't know how to join us. Um, Kevin, I'm going to put the link in the chat again. Um, and so you can... Uh, popping that in again. And actually, I've the, the link's gone out to all of the um, uh, Facebook, YouTube and Twitch... If you do want to join us and tell us about your uh, recent highlights, uh, do so. And Kevin, uh, feel free to use that link. That'll bring you into the studio and we'll bring you on. Let's put Kevin's um, uh, Kevin's comment up. 
Now, um, Kevin noticed I haven't been posting on TikTok. I haven't been posting on anything, really. I've only done a couple of days since I came back, and that was just because I, I felt super flat. And, um, and i got to say, I really enjoyed not getting up early to go outside when it was really, really cold. So i got to say, that was a bit of a wimp for me. Um, uh Ah, uh, now let's see, Kevin. If your browser doesn't support Streamyard, that means that you're not using either um, Chrome or Safari or something else, or that you uh, have one that hasn't been updated. So, okay, we're not getting we're not getting Kevin on until we can um, um, until we can work that out down the line. I really want to get Kevin on to. Uh, for a photography Friday because Kevin's attempting to photograph every bird in the world. And I think every mammal, I think was that, uh, right. Um, well, that's a tough call. Like a, um, <laughs> mammal too. Not yet, using Safari, but it won't work. Um, okay. I'll have to chase that up, Kevin. Uh, Chrome certainly works. It's, um, it's sort of um, uh, StreamYard's optimised for for Chrome, but it tends to work with everything. Maybe have maybe you've just got an old an older um, version of Safari because I know the StreamYard guys are uh, always keeping it like compatible with the current ones so that people can't hijack you hijack your streams. Like remember when 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 that was a big thing on Zoom, where Zoom bombing, and you'd get people coming in doing all sorts of um, obnoxious things on on work on you know corporate meetings and whatnot, because Zoom was so insecure. Uh, it was really easy for for people who had the know how to to find the open uh, the open ports and get in. Um, so yeah, okay, Kevin, we'll have to um, we'll have to do a test and work that out um uh down the line because i've been wanting to speak to kevin since um uh well since i first saw what uh what he's been doing i reckon that i uh, how many how uh, kevin tell me in the in the chat how many external drives have you got to possibly be trying to photograph every bird and mammal and and also fish it's also photographing fish so how many external drives have you got to keep all of those photos? I'd love to know that. Um, Naomi, do you want to jump on and tell us or do you just want me to go through the um, go through the chat? Oh. oh, look, here's Naomi, I'll get to get to yours in a minute. Insects, fish, mollusks, reptiles, amphibians too. Uh 3,000 species on iNaturalist and nearly 40,000 species in the collection. That's astounding, isn't it really, Ricky? <laughs> yeah, it pretty much is. By 3,000 species, do you mean birds, mammals and fish and mollusks and insects or an amphibians? Reptiles. Uh, well, I think, I think that means Kevin has put 3,000 of his shots Spe different species up on iNaturalist, species. but he's got 40,000 pictures of different species in the collection. I think I've got oh, that right. Let, let, let me know. He's got 40,000 species in the collection. Yes. yes. That's but, crazy. But mm. 3,000 on iNaturalist, which I guess oh, is probably, probably, probably species where not many other people have um, taken photos for iNaturalist. Uh, mm. More clarification, over a million photos in 50 countries or on, countries on a 10 terabyte hard disk. I hope you've got them backed up somewhere. <laughs> I, hope you've got, I hope you've got two 10 terabyte hard disks and one of them is backing up the other, I hope. Um, yeah, and, and, as Na and as Naomi has said, yeah, that's amazing. It is amazing stuff. So, yeah. Now, for those who don't know... Um, you can find bird explorers on TikTok, and Kevin does a lot of wordles. Uh, also, all, a, a bit of a travel log. 
because uh, Kevin and uh, Wojcik, his partner, uh, travel around a lot. Uh, also doing, uh, I think aid aid work uh, it, in a lot of the to- a lot of the places they're going. Um, so it's really interesting to um, uh, to follow Kevin. So bird explorers on TikTok, and obviously you see see the they've got a YouTube uh, page. So please check them out. Um, Um, so here we go. Mm-hmm. So three thousand on on naturalist, half of birds. But here's the really impressive thing: we've photographed sixty percent of all the bird species. That is pretty astonishing. Um, so more than say more than six thousand bird species. Yeah. Look, we we don't want to. I don't want to break all of the uh, – uh, uh, or give out all the info now because I've got to have something to talk to Kevin about. Oh, right, okay. Well, no more spoilers. Have, no more spoilers. To, have a, to, have a, uh, to have a chat. Uh, well, here's another weird one while we're on weird things that I've seen over the years. I've seen a lot of weird things. But the, the recent one was a superb fairy round. But another one, when I mentioned that, something else came to mind, and that was uh, around about 2009, 2008 maybe, I was out of Castle Ray Reserve, 6,500. There's a spoiler now. Um, that's amazing. That um, is. Yeah, that's getting up there in the list of, you know, people that do a lot of birds that just twitch them um, or tick them. Uh, yeah, so I was running a little brown birds workshop at Castle Ray Reserve in Western Sydney, around about, I guess it would have been about 2008 ish. And uh, we, we got into it and, and I, I came across around about eight or nine, it could have been a dozen um, shining bronze cuckoos. Oh, how cool. And they were all sitting in several trees, all with their wings extended, all angling them to catch the sun and showing that to Warming you. Warming up. Bronze green. Well, no, because there were females bouncing around between them. Checking oh, them so they were... Sh- so they were doing uh, bird of paradise stuff without they being birds making, of paradise. Mm, yeah. yeah, they, were, and, they um, were bragging. Yes, I had around about a dozen people, maybe a bit more, doing that workshop. Um, it was a little brown birds workshop, like I say, and um, I was just astounded. This went on for about, I guess, five or ten minutes before they just moved on through the forest. I'd never heard of it. I've never seen it written up. Um, but about three weeks later, I was in Royal National Park and I noticed a similar thing happening way up in the canopy of the, the of, of a very tall forest. And, um, yeah, since then I've looked for it. I've not seen it again. But this is a thing that these birds seem to form perhaps um, they, not permanent it's, legs. But, it's, um, it, it's like a have, school dance. It's like all the... All, 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 all the all, all, all the blokes are posing at the school dance, hoping to pick up their, the yeah. the best bird. Yeah. 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 Oh, wild. Well, wild, they're, wild, not, wild. they're not just after the best bird. They're just after every bird. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> right. That's right. Now, uh, Kevin Kevin has mentioned Cornell and Clements keep lumping or splitting. Yes, that's a great frustration that we all get. But here's another Common frustration, I'm sure, for many of us. Dipped out on the planes, wanderer. <laughs> um, oh, you want to? Yeah, yeah. Plenty of birds I mean, to dip who, Yeah, plenty of birds to dip out on, especially getting a good photo of the planes, wanderer. Um, yeah. Um, I've got so many people contacting me at the moment, trying to chase up pilot birds in Sydney. And that's not easy. Um, Am I get, I'm getting a big noisy. Let me just shut down my... Yeah, that was your notification. Oh, someone, that was mine. Yeah, goodbye. Yeah, someone's going, ding. Yeah, that was um, me. Okay. Now, look, everyone, just... Um, just hang on for a minute. Oh, we've got another. Um, oh, Naomi's giving us some Facebook love. <clears throat> Wendy. Ah, oh, and uh, Dana D. 
Dana D, thank you for the uh, Facebook like too. I've only just noticed that, so sorry if you did that a little while ago. Uh, we always love a bit of Facebook love or a, or, or a like. Mm. Um, the well, I have to say, there are birds in Sydney. Difficult. Um, there's Royal National Park. You, there's a few spots where you can go. I'm talking about really tight in the Sydney area. You go up the mountains, you can get them, and um, but in the in the Sydney area, really Royal National Parks, where I'm mostly birding, and um, uh, the um, yeah, there's only a couple of them in in discrete patches in Heath around Royal National Park where I've got I've gone down and got a few, and but they're unreliable. Now, here's a question for you, and uh, uh, Naomi, I reckon that. Um anyone would be pretty excited if they uh, well did he get one or did he photograph one or, or yeah i reckon it's really exciting to see uh a bird that's so odd like the plains wanderer isn't, of isn't that guy still running tours for them there's a guy who used to run i can't think of his name for si some reason simon star i think simon star used to do them i will um might have been here. Uh, no name doesn't seem to ring the bell with oh, me. Oh, and, and, and yeah, oh, we'll, we'll look up with that. Also, but I'm doing more bird tour interviews coming up too, by the way. Uh, but we'll put that one aside as, so as a photograph. Um, here's a question for you, Ricky, from Vicky. Scarlet Robin, Ricky, popular Ricky meet Vicky. Mm. <laughs> uh, a scarlet um, robin's popular at Castlereagh Native Reserve. Uh, captured, no. captured one. Uh, I'm pretty sure when you say you captured one, you mean you, you you managed to record one on your photographic device rather than your butterfly net. That one on your iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, um, they're they I, I would not say they are common. They'd be very popular. But I don't think they're very common uh, there. I've I've never seen a scarlet robin at Castle Row Reserve. I've seen um, uh, red cap robins there. In fact, once again, while I was doing a little brown birds workshop, um, and I had all my big signs up talking about the birds and how you, you know, identify them, uh, there was a little a small shrub right next to me, and it landed right in that shrub right next to me, and everyone ignored me and watched. <laughs> Reach for the binoculars to look at the red cat robin. Sorry, Ricky. We, we opened up the show talking a little bit about the geography of Sydney and the uh, and the different landscape from a couple of well known locations. Um, where does uh, I mean? I know that Castle Ray Nature Reserve is probably near the Castle Ray River, but where is that in the general geography of Sydney? Okay, um, well, you've got Windsor in the far northwest of Sydney okay. and it's only a few kilometres west of Windsor. Okay, so Blue North. Mountains, Foothills. Uh, a little bit before that. Little a little bit, bit before the... Before the so yeah. not as far as Lithgow, not as... Uh, oh, how well, far Lithgow's from, actually, yeah, how, how far <laughs> from somewhere like Currajong? I do know Currajong. Um, a fair way. Okay. So, yeah. so still close, still more. Sydney. Never really measured so, that one, but yeah. So it's on. So yeah. it's it, it's not far. It's not far from where I work, actually. It's only on the, you know, like a twenty-minute drive at the up the road from the zoo where I work. So I'm guessing it's on that flood plain area where it where it regularly floods. Yeah, yeah. Because you kind of, if you think of that hook around that area with. Um, Castle Ray Reserve, Wianamata Reserves, there's two of them, and he kind of like hooks it back around towards Penrith. <clears throat> oh, well, I do know where Penrith is. So. Yeah, and there's just a little creek. There's a few little ephemeral creeks in the locality, of course, apart from the um, uh, the Hawkesbury. Very nice, very nice, very nice. I think it's the Hawkesbury. Um, the Hawkesbury runs through Windsor? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I. Okay, now I am just looking at our little list of what we're going to be talking about regularly. I think now, Ricky, is the time that we can talk about the Discovery Gang. What do you reckon oh. of that idea? Oh, yeah, all right. Let's, okay, um, yeah. 
actually, and let's uh, let's full screen this. So Ricky's got a new project, um, which I reckon's a great idea. Um, so I am going to let Ricky talk to us about Aussie Wild Discovery Kids. Okay. Well, um, there is a growing uh, number, in fact, a, a growing army of parents who are, well, there's always parents looking for things for their kids to do on school holidays and uh, because, you know, that's always a problem. But there is a growing number of parents who are realising that um, uh, kids are spending far too much time on screens, they're, they're not deploying their imagination, they are... Um, uh, you're scrolling that. Yeah, okay. And they, um, there's a, they're losing a lot of developmental opportunity that you get when you go out into nature, you know, pushing boundaries. Um, and, and you can see the writing there, developing courage and resilience and uh, all the things that you get when you go out into nature. And, um, and the amount of time they're spending on screens, it's sort of like stealing everything from their life. And I notice in, in my work at the zoo that so many kids, like if I ask kids that come to the zoo, in, like I get school groups come in and we teach them science curriculum you know, subjects, and I'll ask them who's been for a bushwalk and their hands will all go up and, I mean, you know, who's been for more than, you know, like when I say hands go up, four or five out of 30. And when I say... Um, uh, like how many have been on a lot of bushwalks? Like none of them. There's no regular bushwalkers amongst any kids. They're all terrified of stick insects and snakes and lizards and they're, they're all scared of these things. Um, so I, um, uh, but it's just appalling. And it, it's, I, I've just decided I'm going to do something about this. And at least during school holiday time, I'm going to run this Discovery Kids program. Now, this is for 8 to 12-year-olds, and it's kind of built around a treasure hunt. So when they arrive, um, we're running it in Royal National Park, um, which is a, a lovely big national park on the, the, the south of Sydney and Australia's oldest and the second oldest national park in the world. And um, it's uh, it'll probably be a lot of bird stuff in it, but it's also very nature-based because... It, it really is about introducing kids to all the wonders of the bush and, and letting their minds roam free and for them to find their own interest and fascination. But they arrive and, you know, we give them a little pair of binoculars, we have some magnifying glasses and they get a little clipboard um, and there's some paper to draw on and there are some, you know, pages about, you know, insects and about birds and mammals and reptiles. And um, there is also a treasure hunt page. So we've got a treasure hunt. And so different things in the forest uh, you're going to get different points for. Like if you hear an eastern Whitbird call, you get five points. But if you see one, you get 15 or 20 points. Um, and if you see a satin bower bird, you know, you get eight points. But if you see their purple eye through your binoculars, that beautiful purple eye, well, that's worth 15 points. Echidnas are worth 25 and like that. So you go and there's a treasure hunt, which is kind of used as an entree into getting them, uh, capturing their interest and keeping them engaged as we move along the trail. So there won't be time to sort of start mucking around or messing around and losing the plot. Um, so, yeah, the whole day is kind of like built around that. And um, it lasts for two and a half hours, so it's not a long thing. My idea of setting this up is that I want to start to create something like this, like a little club, where every second Saturday kids can come along for a few hours and we go on a bushwalk and a bird watch. And because that includes when I go bushwalking, bird watching, because we're all looking at the mammals and the birds and everything else that's turning up. And we're getting a lot of bush rats and um, dusky antichinuses along the trails in Royal National Park lately, which is fantastic. Um, and it's definitely the season for um, uh, 
dusky endocrinus at the moment because all the males are out trying to sow their oats. Um, the, uh, so that is sort of like stage one. Stage two is I'm going to establish discovery crew which is for um, 14 to 18 year olds who are considering careers in science or they're you know, strongly give, you know, to being a naturalist or you know, they want to work some, they want to have some kind of work in nature ahead of them. And so um, this is where we will this will also be like a little club. You join that and you know two weekends a month we get together and we go out um, birding and exploring the park as well. And, um, yeah, the, the idea is that will be a little bit more we will dabble in research projects and methods and, and how science is done as much as honing observation skills and exploring, you know, the park. So, yeah, they're the things. But, yeah, this um, the thing for the kids, uh, this Discovery Kids, yeah, it's the... From what I, the feedback I'm getting is that it should be pretty popular. I would think so. Um, yeah, look, the 27th is already solidly booked, and I haven't even, <laughs> I haven't even launched it. <laughs> look at that. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, um, so that's coming up. It's only you know, it's only three, four weeks away. So yeah. if you have, if you have little people. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you have little people or you know of little people who may be um, interested or parents of little people who may be interested, um, here's where to contact Ricky. Ricky at aussiewild.com.au. That's, um, oh, that's is it the website, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, the, also the thing is that this is there's two focuses here. Um, uh of course, my greatest concern is always going to be the children's safety, uh, but that also uh, revolves around the safety of the, the wildlife in the park. And so what I try to tell the parents and the children is my number one concern will be the children's safety, and the number one concern of the children should be the safety of the wildlife around them. And uh, so how we um, engage with the natural world around us and um, everything from, you know, not sampling bush tucker and poaching <laughs> poaching flowers or feathers and things and, um, you know, to make to learning that we don't stomp off the tracks, but especially this time of year when so many birds are nesting in the grasses around the place um, and the snakes are starting to come out. Uh, we don't... Um, uh, distract or frighten birds that are on the nest and yeah you know, so we, we show nature its proper respect and in learning that too we learn to respect ourselves and each other so um yeah it's it, it's it will be like a real little training camp for kids that want to come along get a bit of engagement with um science as you can see i'm creating the scientists naturalists and tree huggers of tomorrow <laughs> and um yeah, we, I, I do want, as I say here, that the, the kids come along and and learn that, that nature's not not a frightening thing, that it's a, um, a totally fascinating and, um, yeah, in, engaging thing to come and experience and um, that when we do, we should do so that, that nature isn't there for us to enjoy or use as much as it is like we will enjoy it but to go and just enjoy. I'm getting a lot of thunder, bird explorers. I'm, we've got a big storm moving over with the rain starting to come down, lightning everywhere. Storm is coming, yes, <laughs> as Batman once said. Um, yeah, so, um, and like I say, you need to learn that they're, they're part of something much greater, and which is, which is this wonderful, majestic planet. And um, that... Yeah, that, that when we when we go into these wild places, it's um, <laughs> Naomi, great comment. Yeah, it's um, yeah when when they go into nature, the passive observation uh, and discovery and exploration is what it's all about, rather than um, you know going out there and you know dare I say riding a mountain bike through it or, or you know running through it or or, or, um, 
or taking a four-wheel drive on it or just going for a bush bash that don't miss the world that's all around us. Because that's where the real, for me, the real joy of life is to be found, is to go out and walk slowly on a bush trail, observing everything, smelling the fragrances, hearing all the sounds, identifying them. I don't take many photographs. Um, well, I, I take a lot of photographs of flowers and, and butterflies. Butterfly photography is my thing rather than birds, which that would frustrate me incredibly. But um, I, I, do record, I, I do record all the sounds of the bush, whether it's berries dropping in a river or, you know, berries falling that are being foraged in the treetops by, you know, some some pigeons or, or bowerbirds and falling through the, the foliage below or, you know, um, the frogs and the birds and the insects and I just love it all. And I want to share that with the next generation. That's a good thing. So I'm just having a look at the, uh, at the comments, Ricky, while you were talking. I, I, I do like um, that. Anti-kindnesses are called anti-kindnesses. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're pretty ferocious. You don't want to be a yeah, girl. I've, I've been the victim of an anti-kindness bite. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You pick them up and go, nah. yeah. yeah, I've been bitten by one. They draw blood. Now, Vic, Vicky's in your uh, your neck of the woods. It's got hail as well as uh, rain. Gee, don't say that. Um, I've got a car park um, out in the open. Yeah. <clears throat> now, um, I just want to note something else that Kevin had, had uh, popped Wild in. Wild birds is barren a... grounds. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, yeah barren grounds is good. I wouldn't call that Sydney. It's the greater, uh, it's not even the greater Sydney region. It's beyond Wollongong. But barren grounds is good to get a, a pilot bird. It's down um, Holly's yeah. neck of the woods. Yeah, it's good to go down there and get your, your pilot birds and your bristle birds and Ground parrots, what tends to happen is people are using playback or they're flushing them down there and you can see lots of trails where people are running in there, um, which is greeted by my vocal disapproval. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of playback at all, but I'm less a, a fan of people flushing those birds. And yeah, you see I'm... a lot of it, people taking shots of them in flight and you see the birds, um, uh, you see the trails through I mean, the, if you, if, through the if heath. You are... If you really have to use playback, I get some birding skills. Yeah, but also, <laughs> also, don't harass birds with playback. That's yeah. my main thing. I mean, I can understand the curiosity gets too much, and you, you know, um, Millie and I use playback quite a few times if we thought we saw something and we wanted to draw it, draw it in. But then you don't keep playing and playing to harass the poor. Well, we're hanging a speaker on a branch so you can get a yeah, photograph yeah, and the poor yeah. beluga bird um, comes up to it. It's not... I mean, the, the, just your phone, playing the call on an app on your phone is plenty loud enough. Birds can hear better than we can. I, some, I, like, I've got recordings of so much. I've got hundreds of recordings of yellow-throated scrub wrens because they're the bird that I sort of survey and study. And uh, now and again, if I hear one and I want to see if there's a male and female involved or maybe get a little bit of an idea of the demography of what's going on there, I might use playback briefly. That's it. It's, yeah, in, in the context of study, it's one thing, but in the context of just, I know people who, who are bird guides in Sydney <laughs> who walk along trails just holding up their phones just playing it. Yeah, no. And all speakers just playing calls, and it's like. Um, now, um, la, la, last thing on the plug for the uh, uh, for the for the discovery. What do we call it? Discovery gang. Discovery <coughs> kids. Discovery kids. Yeah. Discovery kids. Um, just get hold of Ricky through the website aussiewild.com.au, <laughs> or you can email Ricky directly, or find ricky on uh, on facebook and oh murray too if you murray sent me a message i just noticed that he couldn't find me on facebook just go to the bird emergency um page on facebook and message me through there that's the best way i don't do like a personal facebook really so uh no one will, uh, well i don't think anyone unless they actually like my best friend will find me there um 
So, yeah. Um, so I'm going to drop that off. We'll be talking a lot more over the, probably not before these school holidays. Oh, actually, yes, we will. We'll be talking about this, the um, uh, the Discovery Kids on the next uh, yeah. bird watching deep dive. Because, um, yeah, that, uh, yeah, there'll be a lot of, there's a lot of fun things with it and it's, it's sort of set up so that there's a lot of um, you know, uh, useful, cool and useful stuff. Um, that people can download. So there'll be downloads to go with it as well. So, and uh, that's always cool. I haven't worked so, out what merch I'm going to have for it yet. Like, you've got to have some merchandise to give to the kids. I, 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 I need a new cap, just just quietly. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky, have you seen a glamorous reed warbler? warbler? I've heard plenty of glamorous ones, not many. Yeah. Well, they, they have, they've got a glamour of their own, an appeal of their own, the old reed warbler. I do like sort of brownish things. If it looks like a bit of a sparrow or a bit of a, you know, a thornbill or a jerigony or, you know. Well, I, I, I really do like that confusion. So, uh, oh, glamorous weed, reed warbler. What's so glamorous about it? It looks pretty boring to me. So, yes, I can, uh, I can go with that. Warbler. Yeah. Um, okay, Naomi's uh, uh, on the uh, on the don't use a playback. Uh, I think I think this from Kevin is a really good uh, a good comment. Just discourage using it, and certainly don't use it frequently. Um, yeah, even uh, pishing like, and I'm a little bit of a pisher. I'm a, I, I stir up the golden whistlers whenever I'm in the forest. I'm quite a good whistle. I can do the call. I can do so many calls. It's crazy, and um, yeah. Uh, uh, CH two rider or Murray <laughs> or Stormy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, split personality there going on. So yeah, um, I'll um, I'll chase up uh, Murray about his photographic. Uh, archive that he was talking about earlier on on uh, on Facebook, and we can uh, um, uh, we'll talk about that now. Let's see, because we're getting to the point where we need to be winding up. Um, uh, I can unstar that now. Uh, good. Um, what else have we got here? What else have we got here? Naomi's. Uh, oh, look, this is good. What's Naomi got to say? Um, ah, good. So oh, yeah. after after hearing you, Ricky, I just had to read it and make sure it wasn't me. Uh, after hearing uh, hearing you last time, Naomi went out looking for yellow throated scrub wrens and she found some uh, cabbage palms. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what they were hanging out in. So cabbage palms, good. eucalyptus pilularis, and put some ferns, to put some sort of ferns fairly sparsely around there with a few little open patches. Ooh, big lightning. I'm going to get scared now. Um, and you'll get yellow-throated scrub wrens, especially if it's along a river or a creek. We're a big wet ditch. Um, I've got 32 pairs I'm following. And... Wow, that's pretty... Mega, <laughs> uh, oh, Marion, uh, Marion Ward, Wal Walden, Walden, thank you for the uh, Facebook like as well, Marion, and welcome. I don't have we seen, I don't oh. think, um, I don't think we've seen you before, Marion, so uh, welcome aboard. Now, I like this story, well known birder. Um, yeah, I really like this this story and this is one of the horrific kind of things that people do with playback and thanks Kevin for sharing uh, Kevin and Wojcik uh, once had a Malaysian guide that bought in hard to find partridges on gi with giant one meter speakers uh, scared the bejesus <laughs> out of us but I swear within two minutes there were 200 partridges Probably every partridge <laughs> within a hundred kilometres uh, heard it and came in. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, See, this is this is used in. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds like you were on a long lady count and driving Royal National Park almost. <laughs> um, but yeah, this thing. 
people should, this is people who aren't very good at birding that set up and run tours and make money out of this stuff. But, um, and it all, it, it, they're monetizing the, the world of nature and not putting in their own personal work to become good enough at it to find the bird. And if you don't find the bird, you don't find the bird. That's right. That's right. That's yeah. the deal. I mean, people can come on my tour with a tick list and they may or may not get the I'm not going to promise them a bird. That's right. You I can't guarantee it. Twice. I gave a money back guarantee once on um, beautiful fire tails and southern emu wrens and we got them. Yeah, well, male well, and female. Um, the male and female beautiful fire tail sitting on a twig and right below them the male and female southern emu wren popped up and sat on the same twig and the guy got the photograph with all four in it. And it's the only time in the history of planet Earth that has happened. <laughs> that will never happen again. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. believe it. Fantastic. Like I heard yeah. the fire tiles and we knew the emu wrens were around. And I said, hey, we need to stop here, hunker down because they're going to come through. And they did. And then the southern emu wrens popped up. <laughs> oh. uh, here, here's a comment for, uh, for you. Uh, do you remember the old guy who wrote the first Sydney guidebook? Oh, uh, was that the uh, bloke who... I think Peter. Peter he was going to be able to get a partalope to sit on his hat. He had a part of, I think this guy had a part of like sit on his hat once. Well, I'm a pretty old guy, but I don't remember this because I wasn't looking out for Sydney uh, guidebooks when I was yeah. um, uh, down there. Now, yeah. now, I'm I'm just gonna. We might come back to that one in a minute. Uh, Martin's just made a comment, which I think is yeah. Well, in the in the, in the context of research, it's a different thing. Uh, but. But also, if you're doing research, you've already had your methodology uh, scrutinised and approved from an ethics point of view. So you've probably already been trained that you are not going to sit there and blast, you know, well, just feedback, to do it for a and feedback it's playback not... all the time. But even even in research, you're not going to go go out and be doing playback continuously until a bird shows up you you'll have a you'll have a just, method that that you are using that has been approved in to be the least intrusive and least harmful way to satisfy yeah. your research aims and well, that's what we should so. always be doing least uh, the least harm yeah. we should be doing the least disturbing for birds all the time yeah. um, Ricky, yes, it was that guy. Oh, wow, well, you are going to have a massive storm. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, the, um, of course. Yeah, I think it, it's um, that uh, using playback just to get a photo so you can put on social media and get likes and be regarded as a good photographer is like that. Yeah. yeah, Bowler Creek, yeah, um, I've got... Several pair of Lombola Creek. I've got the, the, the very best place and the most reliable couple. Their names are Herb and Dory Feather Fluffer. And um, they are, yeah, you can find them. I, I, I see them every time I go down into Royal, down on Lady Carrington Drive at Jersey Springs. And I notice they're reusing last year's nest uh, this year. So they're renovating and going for it again in there. I've had some down on Bowler Creek last year, renovated last year's nest, and slept in it through the year. So th th they're like they're a little like babblers. They will use the nest year round. We've had jerigonies use some of the nest. The brown, um, not jerigonies, um, the large bill scrub wrens also using their nest, renovating. And uh, yeah, very interesting. Bloody cool! Uh, it's just they so are much fun yellow throated watching. scrub wrens are the coolest bird in the world, I reckon. All the behaviours, the beautiful mimicry, and they're, they're funny little, they're, they're very diet. That's, that they eat figs that have been torn up by bower birds and pigeons and things. So they're into them, and they eat mushrooms, and they, <laughs> and but they're opportunistic. So they never turn a leaf over. They just you know glean off the surface, bobbing along that forest floor, and all of their fabulous mutualisms and commensalisms with the the birds and and, and, and mammals in the forest around them is 
It's just breathtaking. They are the most fascinating little bird. Well, that's why we like going to watch birds because birds are Yeah. Well, the thing is I'm, I'm also recording. When I work along the river, I've, I've got like I've, I've got 32. I'm, actually, I'm now at 34 pairs of birds along the Hacking River and Bowler Creek. And they um, uh, there's about a dozen pairs I'm looking at regularly and half a dozen closely. And it's very interesting. They seem to be producing roughly the same proportion of, uh, yeah, Peter Roberts, yeah, the same proportion of um, males to females or ratios of males to females each year for the same couple. And... Um, it's, I would not be surprised to learn that they were choosing the sex of their young. And which we, is a we, topic for a whole big conversation. Yeah, we kind of uh, touched on that last time we, we did this, yeah. thing, I think, uh, Ricky. So it's a fascinating that, topic. Yeah, um, we might try and chase down some people who have done some, uh, some research and tested. Uh, the theory. I don't think we're going to find them on your scrub wrens, but on other birds. No, no, there's and, nothing on that with them. But, but with chickens, birds, even, yeah, barnyard yeah, chickens. Yeah, I think. I'm sure we can. Uh, uh, sure, we can find someone to <clears> yak to. What's Martin telling us? Uh, uh, yeah, look, th th this is where playback is acceptable. Like where, if you can hear, if you're in a, t a territory. This is this is my view, and some people will say you're a hypocrite or whatever. But I reckon if if you're familiar with a group of birds, or if you're studying a particular bird, you know that they're in the location. Okay, do a little playback once or twice, like like a visiting bird might do, to say, "Hey, I'm here," and then sh then don't do it. Then see what happens, but don't go traipsing around everywhere. Yeah, I, I generally, if I'm walking on a trail and I hear a bird, it's like only if I'm studying it do I do it. Yeah. Otherwise, no, I, I, I don't do it. Um, uh, it's Sometimes I've mistakenly done it. I, just the other day I was saying to somebody, you know, how beautiful this Basian thrush call was, but, and I, I played them a Basian thrush call on my phone and mixing a Basian thrush turned up. <laughs> But, uh, which has a beautiful song, but um, which is why I was I raised it. But yeah, yeah, it's I'm not into it really. Now yeah. here's so I think um, it's, it's to be avoided. I, 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 is my personal thing. Go and if go and find a bit. Yeah. Now it um, and, yeah. and as Martin's pointed out, of course, being being part of the bird emergency uh, uh, riot squad, of course, Martin is going to be. Um, uh, very measured in his approach, and it's part of a study, so that you know you you, you set yourself guidelines. Yeah. But it's, Kevin, it's not, in... it's, we, we, we probably all oh definitely no, yeah, yeah. definitely don't, don't do with ours. Um, any raptors? Any raptor? Well, it, <laughs> I I once I once whistled at um, a brown goshawk because I'm kind of a little bit funny when I hear birds whistle. Sometimes I whistle, yeah. but um. Uh, I, I've I've whistled at um, brown goshawks, and that was silly because they came straight at me. Oh, yeah, they don't like um, they no. don't like being upset. Don't they don't like people in their no. uh, uh, hanging about in their in their locale. Mm. Um, well, I, I think things... swooped by brown goshawks for just being about on the other side of the river, like I guess. 50 metres away from their nest. Yeah, they don't swooped. want you anywhere nearby, yeah. near at all. And um, it's, I'm just walking on the – I'm walking on Lady Carrington Drive and they're nesting on the other side of the Hacking River and they've swooped me. Yeah. Uh, 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 Naomi, I'm, I'm, uh, we're going to talk about Naomi's next point in a minute um, too. And, and Martin's chipped in. These are all good, uh, good points. But while we're talking about goshawks and, and even – Sparrowhawks, if they're around, that and you haven't seen them, but you're doing your playback, trying to get smaller birds come in. You lure, you might be luring them to their death. 
Well, that's the, the other thing. thing. If, if, if you're also it. playing, if you're playing raptor calls, you're also making it impossible oh. for the poor raptors to hunt. That's right, and and mm. you're also making it impossible for all the little birds who would be prey to the cowering. raptors to do their normal thing. And they, it, might, it might mean that a nest gets abandoned. It could be all kinds of things that you that you don't even it. think about. Just don't, just try not to do but, it, you know. That's birds have an incredibly great. high energy budget because it's not yeah. only the demands of flight and movement and all the things they do in their life, just dealing with parasites in their, in their feathers, in their plumage is a constant battle for them. Oh. And if they if the parasites get on top of them, they can start to fall down the pecking order in their locality, and that's a slide to death. That's right, and uh, and, yeah. and, and also if they just got caught in the rain, you know, uh, yeah. they got yeah. to dry off, and that and and that is a huge. Uh, if it's not a sunny day, it's a huge. Uh, it's pretty pretty tough energy, to energy yeah. yeah. So so um, we, you don't want to be disrupting that at all. Yeah, um, there we are. Martin's made the point that a lot of birds yeah. will be scared off um, as well as playback. Now, um, yes, Millie and I... They might, be, they might be sneaking into a neighbouring territory and then you hear them a little bit. You try some playback and they're like, oh, I'm out of here. That's right. Millie and I use playback on a noisy pitter and and we did it for a reason, that we were in a spot where eBird hadn't... had didn't have noisy pitter in that as being common in that locality. And when we were doing the e-bird, uh, you have to prove that it's uh, that you've got the bird right before before they'll accept it. And it was it, we'd seen it, and as soon as it saw us, we both we both saw it. But it went and it went and hid behind these uh, arching uh, uh, roots. So we knew where it was, and we just wanted it to poke its head out and come and have a look. And we knew that with pitters, if you if you do playback, they might come and have a look, or they might just go to ground. They'll shut up, they'll go to ground, you, you won't see them again. So we played back once, and it did call and then come out, but it still wasn't in the spot where Millie could get a picture. And after one call, that was it. We didn't hear it again, we didn't see it again. We can just say like a person said recently about a bird that definitely wasn't in the Sydney region. I've lived in that locality and know that bird very well. So we got a rare bird alert on something that was just like obviously not that bird. Yeah. Yeah. And also rare bird alerts going out to everybody. Um, I'm not, not a fan either because then you get swarms of people going and disturbing the bird. Well, that's one of the reasons why, and I just say to anyone who hasn't been with us since the start this, today, we're going to, be talking about rare bird alerts and try and talk to some of the people who are putting them up from around around the places. But I want to talk about this this thing about rare bird alerts too. This is a whole subject. We can do yeah. rare bird alerts as a whole subject. Yeah, yeah. And and I think the more we talk about it, hopefully we'll get some of these massive twitchers who will, you know, fly across the world to to go and see something. But well, I had an amusing story is when I became warden at Broome Bird Observatory back in 2004, the rose-coloured starling tur- had turned up oh, there. Yeah, and we got, right. we got a plane load of twitches up from Perth, Melbourne, Adelaide and Sydney all wanting to see it. And they all jumped in the, in the troopy and down they went and they all got it. And they came back and then one birder, and I got a feeling it might have been Sean Dooley, <laughs> but he turned up and dipped. And so he flew oh. back to Melbourne. And then a day or two later, it was it back. Turned up. Yeah. Flew back and came up and ticked it. Oh. <laughs> so he flew across Australia a couple of times to get a a a, a, a blow in, um, you know, uh, rose coloured starling. Can't do that on a, a on on a bird podcast budget. I can tell you. No, that, so. I did. But... I once went to twitch the um, a pied honey eater, and I drove I drove down to Anna Plains from Broome. And I got back and, and the next night we were doing migration watch at the observatory and 16 of them flew straight over our head. And I thought, never again. It's always a way, isn't it? It's not it's a picture. Always <laughs> yeah. um, now, now, Naomi makes a really, really good point that if you're in a location where there's other birders around and yeah, you yeah. do your playback yeah. and get your tick, 
bear in mind that if there's 30 or 40 people going down that trail in the in the afternoon they're all going to do it so no, that is, third, yeah, this is the this is the so thing. That, yeah and 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 this is the analogy i used before it's like someone coming at your front door and just knocking, 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 knocking. And every time you come and answer the door and you think, hello, yes, thank you. Oh, yes, very good, go away. And then you go back to doing what you're doing. You go back to your shed or go back to your footy game. And then they come back to the door and bash on the door again. Hello, I want your attention again. Hello. And then you do what you're doing and then they come back and then, uh, or it's like, well, it's like we had the other day. Um, Will you just stop I, coming to the door? Uh, yeah, you and, stop coming to the then, door. Like the bristle birds in Barrington Tots, that every man and his dog went up there using playback to get them. Yeah, they just don't and, show. And they I, don't I, show I, I don't, yeah. I had three different lots of people who wanted to um, save me uh, the other weekend, um, and and I had to say, oh, I think you're. Uh, uh, I think the other people from your group who are also parked across the road. I think they came and saw me just before. Oh, well, would you like some literature? No. And then 10 minutes later, bang, bang, bang. Hello, we're here to save you. Well, yeah. oh, no. it's, it's, <laughs> so that's, to me, that's kind of what playback is. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I think we've established not particularly a fan of playback, but um, uh all three yellow-throated scrubber and some species. Well, that's pretty good going. Pretty yeah, good going. So I've never seen them up. I've never seen them up in yet yeah, in um, the cassowary house yet. Yeah. And but the ones up in north, the top of uh, Queensland, up up in um, the Toberlands, I think it is. Um, Look, yeah. I don't know what subspecies we were looking at at Gelatin, but um... yeah, cassowary house. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes um, exactly. Kevin. Kevin's just uh, popped in for anyone. I, I d I'm pretty sure we won't be making this a podcast, so everyone's probably reading it. But if you're at work and you've got one ear on what we're doing and not watching your screen at the moment, uh, Kevin and Wojcik have a very very strict code of conduct uh, for their photography and their bird watching, or in their nature watching, let's call it that, yeah. their fish watching, their everything. If you love wildlife and nature, you have to respect and care for it and you have to limit your global carbon footprint. I think I think you just have to let the creatures go about their own business. And I'll extend it even further. Be careful about when you're accessing any place. Don't be breaking branches. Don't be... Don't be move. Don't, don't stomp off the trail unless. And don't roll rocks over and all that kind of stuff because oh, no. there's something that lives or uses everything that you're touching. Right? So yeah, I'm, I think be really people, mindful of it. people that are switched on to this stuff and who are nature lovers or naturalists um, uh, know that you don't do that kind of thing. Yeah. And then there are the kind of people that go out and they want to build a Zen stack or they and they ah. just. Oh, oh, that's just reminded me. Uh, I'm sure are. Millie. I'm sure Millie got very sick of me saying, "I just wanted to kill every everyone I ever." S these these rock stacks, they're everywhere, and then yeah. through western Western Queensland and the Northern Territory. Really, pe no, people putting bloody t-shirts on termite mounds for goodness gracious! Oh, really. How, how does it? Yeah, and they put hats on, so they dress termite mounds up as people. How do animal? How do an animal that thermoregulates with in in their home, which is their termite mound? How do you expect them to do it if you put a t-shirt on? You people are just idiots. Really annoying. And that those highways where uh, Western Queensland and. Uh, uh, and through the territory, I hadn't seen it before. I didn't know it was a thing. Bloody no, ways. I didn't know this was a thing. I've been up there for a few years, so I haven't seen that. Yeah, I don't know where when it started or whatever, but boy, Jingo, there's more idiots out there than 
than non idiots, I think. I think that's my. Well, there's a lot of take. sort of um, Instagram type tourists out there, mm. people who go out, they, they tour now because of a thing called Instagram. You've got to have yeah. something to photograph, you know. So you'll do a Zen stack, photograph it, you'll do a thing and, you know, stand there, turn a, turn a termite mount into a snowman kind of look and stand there with your arm around it, and there's a shot for Instagram or. Oh. Um, all, all of the rubbish that goes on is social media. It's a scourge. Get off it, people. Blooming idiots. Oh, yeah. if you're on social media, yeah, use, else, it, else. use it for good. <laughs> it should be like a superpower, and you should use your superpowers for good, not for evil. Yes. We all know that from watching cartoons when we were kids. When we were locked down in Fiji, and I, we used Q-tips to gently poke around the so it's not to damage or hurt anything. All right. It still probably pissed off a lot of fish. <laughs> um, I mean, that, that's the thing. We, whatever we do, as soon as we go into the natural environment, we're going to disturb some things. The key oh, is to yeah. The, yeah. the key is to do as little disturbance as possible. And well, it's a little bit like I, I do. I do the vegan thing. I've done the vegan thing for nearly all my life. And um, but you know, when we talk about this stuff. Um, and people are talking about what's vegan or what's not vegan, blah, blah, blah. So, but we all boil water. Yes. And think of all the little microorganisms you kill, and then when you finish boiling the water, you pour it straight down the sink and kill more. <laughs> Pouring yeah. boiling water on top of them. Yeah. And I think we can't be perfect. No, you've just got to we lessen can, your. We lessen can your always do better. And always try and make the best choice you can or the least worse choice that you can i think yeah, so, sometimes and that, and you can't that's make what the best these one. things are really all about it's aspiring to do good and doing the best we can at, at, at any moment and uh this is also something that could become the conversation of a podcast is you know touching nature gently yeah, yeah. um yeah. i've got to go very shortly but i would just say Me. step on a meat ant's nest <laughs> you'll yeah. become the meat <laughs> Um, That's happened a few times. Actually, even last time I was at Cape Tea Valley, I was standing there looking at a hooded robin <laughs> with one foot on one of their nests and I looked down and my leg was quite covered and it was a wonder I wasn't bitten. But, yeah, that's uh, yeah. And I'm always telling people, take care not to stand on an ant nest. Yeah, yeah, be really like careful. Uh, look, <laughs> and try not to step on any bull ant or jumping jack or anything oh, like that. They're very nice. They're shy and gentle. And... and and, and it hurts, so don't do it. Um, so let's get back to what the whole topic of today was. It's really to introduce what we're going to be doing. Ricky's going to be doing like a Sydney roundup when we uh, when we do each of our shows. Um, I'm go I'm looking for people who might like to do the roundup from wherever they are based. Um, uh, Kevin, if we can work out your uh, uh, wherever you are, I'd love a roundup from wherever you're at for <laughs> each time. So we better work out how to get Kevin on on stream and and work that out. But it, wherever you are, if you're a regular and you'd like to be involved, and you would like to contribute your uh, your roundup, now you don't have to do it live. Okay, what you can do, you can record a little video for me and tell me. Um, your highlight or if you've heard that someone had seen something in your patch well make a little video please do it in horizontal um, format rather than vertical format it just makes it much easier to bring in and do um, so turn your phone on the side okay uh, I'm it. It. Yeah. and mm. You can send that to me at the bird emergency and I reckon Ricky I was I, I meant to ask you this the other day. I'll make a special um, email for this. I was wondering, should it be submit or submission at the bird emergency? She's <laughs> <laughs> oh, either a fairly crook, aren't they? <laughs> I, re I reckon submit at the bird emergency has a real ring to it. So, um, so I'll uh, I'll create that email in just a minute. Reminds me of some interesting friends I've had in the course of my life. Yeah, well, that's right. I, I think it it, it it should be one that people won't forget, and that's the thing with email addresses. You always want them to I be think easy submission. to remember. Yeah. Oh, 
<laughs> submission at the bird emergency. Uh, well, actually, guess what? I'm going to create them both. So <laughs> submit or submission. Um, and if you if if you um, and, and I want to get a straw poll from everyone who's here now too. Um, uh, 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 I'm really interested in what is your preferred social media channel because I want to I want to do more of of my little impromptu social medias but I want to do them on less on less places because it it just takes a lot of time uploading and you know doing a little there so um apart from YouTube because most people are here on YouTube at the moment and Facebook obviously we're going to be doing um I'll keep putting stuff on Facebook. But for interaction, Facebook is not where I do my interaction. So um, uh, so where do you do your interacting social media? If possible, I'd like to sort of take nearly everything into YouTube, but it's there's not that same opportunity to chat and do instant feedback. But the comments in YouTube... Uh, good. I do check them and I do get notified um, about them. So that would be good. Now, what have we got? Um, let's just get back through some of these comments before Ricky has to go. What's uh, Kevin got? Boy, your pasta and rice in miso. Yes, I I, I do I do that trick. Um, the pasta, it's really good. And and miso, I use miso paste as as a soup base too. Um, yes. With uh, uh, with a with a can of tomatoes. Um, I just love a, a tablespoon or a large teaspoon of miso, just with hot water poured on it, and drink it like a, a beverage. Yeah, well, I just, I just throw some it's noodles weird. in. It's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, nice. uh, Kevin's in Bangkok. He's back to Fiji soon. Uh, uh, Oh, okay. Um, Democrats abroad. Okay, so secret Kevin's the secretary of Democrats abroad. Okay. Um, so, so Kevin, uh, I'm sure you've bought the Trump T-shirt with the mugshot. Is that would that be right? Um, and let's see. Uh, now they want me to say in Bangkok. Um, okay. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Send him a postcard from Fiji and so do you. <laughs> um, I'm just having a look. Martin saying on YouTube, we can't post a picture or anything uh, <clears> or <throat> comment. Um, Martin, uh, for interactivity um, with YouTube, you should be able to record a short as a comment. But we, we need to sort of work through this. But that's what I would like to get going on on YouTube. YouTube's made the interactivity uh, sort of easier. And you can, re a bit like TikTok, where you can uh, respond to comments with a, a video or with another TikTok. Oh, TikTok too. I'm going to put a lot more effort into TikTok because it's people, are, people use it and they... And they talk and they follow up with threads, which is, uh, and I don't mean I don't mean threads the app. Um, it's just uh, it's good. It's just good that people um, interact. And I think if we're going to try and build a community and share knowledge, that's what we really need to uh, 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 to do. So uh, now Martin would like to work that out, Martin. Um, I will uh, set. Uh, oh, these should all be in the comments. Everything here should be in the comments in the YouTube anyway. So I will. We can do some testing of that uh, over the next few days if you want, Martin. Uh, Kevin said, uh, "Big orange menace." Uh, well, he's obviously not that big. He's only two hundred and fifteen pounds, don't you know? Um, uh, 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 okay, cool. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. 
Kevin going to start a TikTok campaign for The Voice. Um, I have to say, I have found some of the most off-the-wall mental racism uh, come at me when I have been acknowledging the First Peoples of Australia on TikTok uh, and some amazingly um, nice people as well. But it's there's weirdos out there um, uh, everywhere. It is a very strange world, isn't it? With I don't, I really don't get racism. I really don't get homophobia. Yeah, I just, I just do the block thing if. Uh, uh, I, and, and and it's really funny. I love how people in Australia will go, uh, I, we've got freedom of speech here in Australia. And uh, uh, Newsflash, no, we don't. We don't have a First Amendment in Australia. So many people don't even know that you cannot engage in a lot of really destructive well, speech in Australia. What is called the Anti-Discrimination Act? We, well, well, we do, and we and, and and actually, a lot of the things that people think they're free to say are actually actually crimes in Australia, and you should sometimes yeah. shut your mouth. We um, had that woman. I can't remember her name, and it's kind of funny that I can't remember her name. That did the did the the transphobic tour of Australia. Re, oh, right? oh, oh, pop pop popsy or whatever her name was. Oh, um, that um, that that. that the one who came out and was friends with Renee Heath and all that, and 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 all the other cookers, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, with nasty well, uh, people. Um, Posey, Posey, Posey Parker, Parker. Yeah. Posey Parker, and um, I, I was um, devastated that they let her into the country, and I, I wrote a scathing letter to the Prime Minister about it, and yeah. and the behaviour of his minister as well over this, and um, uh. The idea that someone just, she came out here with a specific purpose and sponsored by the Australian Christian Lobby, directly sponsored and supported by uh, them, to come out here and create a culture of transphobia. I, yeah, I, New I Zealand chased her out. They I, got I mean, New Zealand chased her out, but what I liked was that uh, at, one of, at, at one of the things she, she did here, not the one in Melbourne, but the, the next one, I, I thought that she one. had... She had like five people turn up. Yeah. It's like, you know, I, I could probably get five people turn up if I went to Hobart, you know. There's, there's no doubt a lot of people out there have reservations about transgender people in some facets of life. Um, but there are not, there is just not the general mood in Australia for people to despise transgender people. And I, oh. I know this through my own experience. Yeah. We, we, I think. Uh, I was watching something um, from the States. Oh, it was Sam Cedar today, uh, Majority Report, where uh, some people, some trans people had rung in from different states and there, there's this big movement. Um, a lot of people are moving from unsafe states because yeah. really... It's become so terrible. It's so dire. People, but but, they, they, but they're, they're there are now people... There are now people uh, trying to move to Australia and saying they are refugees. Well, there's, from... there's um, actually there's refugees, people with transgender children who've moved to Canada, and I know a couple who've moved to New Zealand. Yep. And yeah, yep. Australia would be it. Yep. I, I, I'm not sure how many people are, are, are getting. Uh, I mean, they can generally get admitted um, for so many, in so many categories. I'm not sure and. Actually, re rebooting my migration podcast coming up in the ne in the next little while too. Um, live, work, and study in Australia will be uh, kicking off again. Uh, but that's one of the things we're going to really look at, apart from how to migrate here. But then, what kind of protections are available with so much bonkers stuff going on in countries like Russia and um, you know even places like Hungary and and, I was, and, I recently, and the States. I recently met with, I had lunch with the UK Minister for Sport um, and uh, he, he was very interested in and wanted to discuss how is it that here in Australia we are so successful with, our, um, with creating a welcoming and inclusive nation compared to other countries. 
we absolutely lead the world in this space and it, it and people talk about pride that's what i'm proud of is that we live in a country that is okay there's there's still a long way to go and there'll be individuals who can tell you some pretty harrowing stories but um we as a, as a nation and and generally speaking we are such a welcoming and inclusive one and it, it is it's an amazing thing so Leaders in other parts of the world are looking at us and watching and wondering how and why we're achieving this. Well, and that's why, you know, I, that was one of the reasons I was invited to a lunch with the, the minister. I think one of the reasons is, and I'm, look, we're, sorry we're off topic. Uh, we are completely we're, off we're, 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 we're off. We're off I know no transgender birds. But it's, um, uh, but I think that when you have a, country that is not homog fairly homogenous in its ethnic or cultural makeup you just you're just exposed to more and you you are interacting with people who are not exactly the same you know i just yesterday actually i did think this when i was walking back from the uh, from the supermarket and and i was watching the cars come past and I was only watching because I'd seen this stupid report on the news where it said um, 10 percent of, of all cars on Victorian roads are EVs. So I thought, I'll just have a look at the cars. Uh, nowhere near 10 percent of all the cars on the roads around here are EVs. But the other thing I noticed is that about every third person is looking at their phone. So that's one thing. But the other thing I noticed was how many people have got the full Muslim big beard and the shaved head uh, look, oh, which, yeah. which which around um, the 9-11 time would have terrified people in so many countries. And I just thought, it's it's just normal. It's just everyone around here. We're just, we're all, we're all different, you know? And well, I think that, I think that um, our, our diversity, you know, has proven to be our strength in this regard. And that there's people who come from cultures who um, do have problems with transgender people because it's not something that has, because they've come from cultures and nations where there isn't a lot of diversity and where diversity is stifled and they come here and they have to learn these things. So it takes a while for them to learn and accept. You know, yeah, biodiversity, um, conservation, human, of course they do. And anyway, I, I do know a number of transgender birders. Well, um, <laughs> if not transgender birds. Well, I think I think I've mentioned this before, Ricky, but I think it wasn't until we had talked, you know, in, informally, three, four, or five times. I had no idea you were trans, and it. I mean, it, this is this is exactly what Sam Cedar said this morning, that most people don't care. And when when we use the terminology "don't care," it's not like "I oh, don't care about your well being" or anything like that. That's not the point. We're just not interested in getting up everyone else's bloody nose and about their how they live their life. Because but this is something that happened that I, I did all this. I, I had my funny operations and did all my changes, you know, over forty years ago now, like in nineteen eighty, and. This is just not a part of my life, but it is a part of my life because of what happened to me in sport back in 1991. And then so I, I'm an ambassador at Pride in Sport Australia, athlete ally and like this. And so I do a lot of talk about um, trans, trans inclusion um, in our communities through sport. And, um, yeah, but but otherwise it's not my life. I'm just a birder. Yeah. Now, now Ricky, I... Oh. I'm going to display my uh, lack of listening um, carefully enough, but when we were talking the other day, um, did you say you're in the Hall of Fame? Oh, no, the Australian, <laughs> the Australian Sports Museum has created a little section, a little pride section there, and they've got, and, and I better not get this wrong, so I'm going to go to Twitter and just see... Um, Make sure I get the names of who's there. I know Ian Roberts is there. Oh, Josh Josh Cavallo is in there. Um, and uh, Ian Roberts, myself. I think Sally Shippard and Elia Green are in there. 
So, um, yeah, there's half a dozen or, or four or five of us at least. But that, but, um, but that, but that, is, that is the Hall of Fame, isn't it, at the, at the Institute? It might be. I just, I think it's just the Australian Sporting Museum, isn't it? Okay. Down there oh. in Melbourne. Um, well, I'm not in there, so there we go. It's, well, what's going uh, on? Yeah. yeah Give me a, bird, a birding hall of fun. Gee, gee, the egos would be jostling then if we did that, wouldn't they? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the egos were jostling around these decisions. Actually, let, it's let, let me... I'm the one who doesn't want to be. <laughs> actually, <laughs> um, uh, I, I, have to, I have to say, I'm, I'm sure people will want to hear a little bit about... Uh, about the trip and everything too. And sorry if that's what you were um, waiting for today. I will be talking about a bit more about the trip with Holly on Monday. But um, because the podcast is only audio, nobody nobody who is like a podcast only listener knows what I look like. Right? So, so it, was, it was really amazing where... Um, and and Millie was always the star of the show at w- wherever we were, you know, because um, because it's a current project and everyone sort of knew about it. But so many people <laughs> freaked out when they realised who I was. <laughs> so, this guy, you that, all look, the longer uh, you were travelling, the more you were looking like um, oh, what's his name from you know the San- the Santa Claus. <laughs> the oh, was and, well, I, I, I thought I was starting to look like David Bellamy. Remember. <laughs> Oh, Remember, right. yeah, 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 right. yeah. Um, well, but yeah, I it, 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 reference there. Yeah, it was it, it 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 was nice to cut the cut the fluff off. I, I must say, um, but it's insulating me in the, at at the moment. But yeah, um, yeah, it, that that was that was fun. But yeah, I did meet quite a lot of people who were going, oh, oh, yeah, I know. Um, so that was cool. That was that was real. That was really fun. Um, and oh, and the other thing I, I was uh, always asking people was um, uh, uh, oh here we go, um, Kevin Millie, uh, 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 Millie is Millie Formby and she is flying a microlight around uh, the country. Uh, Wingthreads dot com is where you can check out what Millie's been doing. Her project was is um. Uh, raising awareness for shorebird conservation, protecting shorebird habitats, and and I was on the road with Millie as the ground crew. Obviously, if she's flying somewhere, someone has to bring the car and the trailer along to the <laughs> to the next spot. And yeah, I I joined in. Um, well, in Brisbane, we went to the Toonda Rally, Toonda Harbour Rally, and then from Rockhampton ar- around to Darwin. Um, I was the ground crew and Millie was flying and we did get uh, uh, stopped in a number of places because a uh, uh, microlight can only fly in certain wind conditions. So a lot of the times if it was too windy or, yeah, too windy or rainy or the cloud, too much cloud or whatever, we couldn't go anywhere. So so we did get stuck in a few places, but that gave us lots of opportunity to go birding. So wingthreads.com. Uh, you can follow along with Millie. Uh, I actually don't know. She's probably in the Kimberley or something by now. Uh, I would, I would think she may even be a bit further down the, uh, uh, down the coast. So she's on the final part of her journey. She has flown from Perth across the bottom of Australia and up the east coast across the divide and across to Darwin. Darwin is where I left. And um, she had another two um, people to help her get all the way back around to Perth and to finish her journey. And Millie is a zoologist, um, obviously with a with a keen interest in in shorebirds. So um, yeah. Uh, so, hey, I've got to get going. I'm uh, afraid. Uh, well, me too. I've got to buy so, uh, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah. Okay. So there we go, folks. Uh, our next bird watching deep dive is on Tuesday, the fifth of September at three p.m. And 
thebirdemergency.com slash live is still where you can always see what's coming up next. Holly will be joining me on um, on the 4th. So, hey, that's cool. So we've got – I did get that right, didn't we? Didn't we? So next next Monday it's Holly and mm-hmm. next Tuesday is Ricky. That's right? Yep. That's right. Okay. And so, then we'll Ripper. be getting the deep dive, I guess, then. That's right. So just remember, if you do want to be like your local correspondent to give us a rundown of the cool things in your patch or what you've seen, uh, all you have to do is send it to um, uh, to me. You can look. Let's let's say there are so many emails. Grant at thebirdemergency dot com. Submit at thebirdemergency dot com. And submission at thebirdemergency dot com. They'll all get to me. So um, let's. Uh, uh, let's do it. Oh, wow. Really? Big, Take big race. Like birds that are, like now a lot of birds are on the move around Australia and we've got breeding season and birds are really changing their calls now. So we're hearing like the, this whole processional thing going on. So there's lots happening if you get out there in, in nature at the moment. And, um, you know, I'm just loving it. So you can see what birds are gathering this material, what ones are feeding their young, how far they're progressing in their feeding. I mean, these are all fabulous topics. Um, but changes of calls like partalotes are now moving from a, a, a three-note call to a more complex one where they're often using the lower notes. So we're getting more yeah. and yeah. and more. And that instead of that, we're getting that. Yeah, and yeah, uh, yeah. which means they're definitely now they're nesting. Yeah. Um, and so many, so many things. All the tree creepers in Sydney are wobbling their heads off now. We're not getting as much of their screeching high-pitched whistle. Uh, and just, yeah, you know, stuff like that everywhere. It's fabulous. And it's like I say, the yellow-throated scrub wrens are all hard at it, which has got me excited. And um, they're all doing a lot more mimicry, which they seem to do when they've got nests going. So I love it. <sighs> it's just, I'm mimicry it's just to next week. It's just fab. It's just fab. Um, and do keep an eye on what I'm doing. Uh, hit me up on your preferred socials and we'll try and make sure that we're all talking to each other more. I'm, as I mentioned, I am going to limit um, where I do things, but I'm going to do more things where I end up landing. Uh, but please follow on YouTube uh, because that's probably be going to become the focus of a lot of the um, – a lot of stuff will end up on YouTube that won't end up anywhere else. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. You'll be far more special on YouTube um, and we'll uh, we'll just take it from there. What have we got here? We've got a uh, last couple of comments. Uh, afternoon, monsoon, thunder. Well, that certainly sounds like a monsoon is about to happen in – in Sydney at the moment. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's well underway. So that's cool. I just heard some water hitting the ground outside my window. Uh, Vicky, thanks oh, Vicky. again. Uh, okay, Vicky, I really have to be honest. Facebook is going to get less of the love just simply because I don't really use it. All the streams will still go on on Facebook like now, but in terms of the interactive stuff, I I just can't do all of them the way I would like to. So, um, uh, but I'm not. I can't keep supporting the the Musk man with his um, with his support of neo Nazis and and rubbish that's going on on Twitter at the moment. So or X. So that might be a big X from me on there. But I have to replace it with something else and. Threads seems pretty nice, but um, I don't know. If I could do everything on YouTube and we could use the shorts and all that, I would I would, I would, would like that. I would like to do everything in one place and do more things rather than do uh, less things well over a lot of places, So if that makes sense. Uh, but then again, I don't want to leave anyone out, so it's a bit hard. Anyway, 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 anyway. Birdwatching Deep Dive. We've done another one, Ricky. Um the format will will develop, but uh, just remember, uh, what do you got? Yeah, get rid of X everywhere. Mark. He is, he is not, not a very 
pleasant person. At least as far as social media go, yeah, his behaviour's been pretty poor. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, I've had absolutely no growth on Twitter slash X in, I don't know, five months or six months. So, like, um, it's just completely died. People haven't left, but it's but they're hardly using it. Um, but there's still people who are active who I don't want to lo- don't want to lose. But I don't think X can or Twitter can survive um, because it's just just losing so much money. I think. He wants to turn it into a payment platform and and like a marketplace and whatnot. It's and I think terrible that's that he took this, put this thing over that was humming along quite nicely and decided to make it something else. Instead of building his own thing up, he took something else over and decided he was going to, you know, make it in his own image. And just coming up with that, that X, which, you know, that screen swastika sticker at me when I saw uh, it. But but see he he had the X domain years ago before he got involved with the people from PayPal because he was involved in the really early days of PayPal and he yeah. wanted to change the name of PayPal to X and all the other people at PayPal said no that's a dumb idea yeah and, that's really and bad then and, and, then, and then and then they yeah. threw him out. Um, uh, he paid forty four yeah, billion for so. Twitter and then ruined it. Yeah, um, and he, he yeah. is he's so transphobic. He's horrible. Oh, and 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 reinstating someone who had who was a convicted pedophile. Oh yeah, pedophile. some of those that really was, horrible. Some yeah. of really he, he, he let all the horrible people back on that had been creating so much hate and anger. And you you don't you, I would really recommend um, you know talking about another podcast on this podcast. But there's a fellow called Rich Roll in America, and um, He's interviewed a few people that have uh, had dealings around social media and sat down and worked it out. And um, there's some real eye openers there about how algorithms work and what social media is all about. And which we know it's just money, but how they work to make that money and how it works to the detriment of of our minds and our collective minds and culture, and how it is doing as much damage as Rupert Murdoch ever did. Um, uh, so. Uh, I, I didn't touch social media for three or four months this year at all. And I only came back recently and I'm just doing a little bit to promote a bit of what I do. Um, but, yeah, I'm not using it in the way I used to, you know, interacting with a lot of people, unfortunately. But so I'm just putting there what I've got. I hope people like it and and that's pretty much it because yeah, I just... Yeah. I, I just I don't want to be a part of it. You get on there and sooner or later some person says something horrible to you. And if they say something horrible, the algorithms have all worked out that, that unkind words and that um, saying mean things gets more of a boost because they know that more people look at that than if we all write nice things to each other. And the people who say the most radical things get the biggest platforms. And yeah, well, so it's it's dividing us awfully. It, it's a it's a horrible social media is really horrible. I'm I'm I mean, basically most of my promotion of Discovery Kids is going to be I've printed up the flyers. I've got the flyers ready to print up, I should say. Um, I'm sticking my telegraph poles in front of all the primary schools. Oh, that, that's that's a good idea. Oh, yeah, the other the, the other thing I should note too is that I am going to be developing Substack. Uh, as well, and I'm going to, I'm going to put the the top ten, and then the top, then the next top, next top ten most popular episodes of the Bird Emergency that have been out there um, will be going out on Substack. So that's to try and get another audience. But then I will be doing members stuff. I've got to find somewhere where it's easy to do members stuff. Um, uh, and there's buy me a coffee, and um, I'll keep going with that. But I don't know whether Patreon is the go- is the thing, uh, or whether Substack. I might do them all, and they might end up being a little bit different on each one. But mm-hmm. anyway, I do want to do much more community building. And Ricky and I have been talking about maybe doing some combined bird watching days where we might um, team up and go to different places and do some kind of classes but also um 
I think it's going burden, sharing some yeah. burden with people. Yeah, and, and, and we might try and rope more people in who are <laughs> specialists in different places so that we can actually build a bit of community, have a bit of fun. Um, I think that's a great idea to, yeah. you know, to meet up with, you know, different birders and, and, you know, share your patch and we all yeah. go birding and we all that's fly right. in there and go birding and we all, you know, give give a small locality, you know, a boost or... Yeah. Um, or, yeah, or just or, like yeah. places that are that are really thought not thought of as being special, like you know you're the, mm. the the local big municipal park, you know, because well, they've tag, all got something on, that is special. I'm putting it on a, a quick seven or eight day tag along tour around New South Wales um, next year. I'm just waiting on my new car, <laughs> my new oh. SUV, <laughs> it's a well, little I'm, hybrid I'm, SUV. Well, I'm almost considering buying a car after not having one since 2014, um, yeah. but I don't know. That's a well, you for better, me, that's you better a big order decision. it now if you want one. In the... Oh no, no, I, 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 yeah. I would, I would be buying a second hand, say and third, fourth, fifth, sixth, twentieth hand kind of yeah. vehicle if I was to do it. But we'll recycling uh, some of this car. But right. I've been so, I think I, I don't know. I, I, I would rather, I would rather. Contact someone who has already got. Um, actually, here we go. Let's do a planes wanderer tour. Hey, Ricky. Let's. Um, how about we? How about I chase up the people who, who I've spoken to about planes wanderers, and why don't we do a meet up at at a at a at a, um, a grassland somewhere. <laughs> let's do a meet up. We'll have we'll have a barbecue. Late afternoon lunch or yeah, something, and then yeah, and then <laughs> and then we'll go, and then we'll go uh, searching for planes wanderers, and then uh, yeah, oh look, I reckon we, I reckon things like that would be really fun. Uh, um, all right, Kevin's no, in. That's great. Kevin's in. Yeah. Yeah. Naomi's in. All right, so um, I just need to be able yeah, to bum a lift with someone. I never chase a bird. I go to a locality. Like I think yeah. hmm, Ladensburg National Park sounds good. I'll take the drive up to, you know, Winton. Uh, or, you know, sometimes I, I might think, well, you know, I want a bunch of these birds and they're all this one. Like I'm going to Sturt National Park or I'm going to go to Fowler's Gap or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and just see what bird population is there and soak up the gorgeous, the gorgeous scenery that you get in these places and not just... It's not like it's a little bit like, and gee, I'm really getting off topic here. But when when I see people in in forests and out in in wilderness places, and I say I come here to relax, I say to them, "No, you don't. You come here to connect." And they go, "Yes." Yeah. And so to go and connect and immerse yourself in in some of these places, often remote, and and just soak up the spirit and vibe of the place, and see the birds that are there. There is something just so deeply nurturing. It just really gets you in your proverbial soul. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's what I really love about birding. Go right, now, just... but before we sign off, Ricky, sorry to interrupt you. Um, we've had a bit more Facebook um, Facebook likes. Hello, Neil Hamilton. Uh, thank you for the Facebook like. Uh, Rose Wise, Wise Mantel, I think I've pronounced that well. Uh, welcome, Rose. Haven't seen you before. Nice to uh, meet you. And Neil, uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, of course, you can listen to Neil's episode in the Bird Emergency, uh, yep. where we talked a lot about night parrots and, and other, uh, other birds. Um, so, yeah, chase that up. Uh, Naomi, connect and unplug. I... I rediscovered my plant, my inner plant nerd while I was away. Um, so I'm now touching bark and looking at flowers up close mm -hmm. again and all the things I had kind of stopped doing. So oh, that's that was fascinating really cool. world, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice. So, all right, uh, we, we, were, we were finishing up 10 minutes ago. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, uh, I, my next duty there? awaits. Um, yeah, cool. Okay, so... If you're in Melbourne and you are at the MCG and doing the tour, look for Ricky in the Museum of Sport. Uh, she'll, she'll be there alongside Ian Roberts. Um, for those of you who are rugby uh, rugby league fans, um, and Josh Cavallo, if you're a soccer or football person, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Jo I, 
n- not really a household name, Josh. A- a- apart from, he's, he's just apart from the, a- apart from all the uh, all the storm he got, uh, the media storm when he when he came out, and people were going, "Oh, gee, I didn't know that there were gay guys playing soccer." God, yeah, people are stupid, yeah. Aren't they? Well, because well, yeah. Sally is comes from the you know playing for the other side in the women's yep. competition. Yep, and um, she's there. And, uh, yeah, so... Actually, actually, I'd I'd appreciate your comment on this, Ricky, and we'll wrap up on this. How amazing was it that we had a national team where about three-quarters of the members of the squad are out and proud, and there was hardly any commentary about it. It just wasn't a big deal. How cool was that? Well... Yeah, but this is this speaks to all kinds of cultural elements because it seems that it's much more acceptable for women to be gay, to be lesbian, uh, than it is for men to be gay. And this comes back to, I believe, the whole toxic masculinity thing of you're being you're being queer, you're like a girl, um, you're letting the side down. I'm not. Um, I got that was the, that was a schoolyard vibe I got when I was five years old for playing. Uh, yeah, yeah de- definitely, definitely. I mean, look, you know, I'm I'm coming up to sixty, and certainly, uh, certainly, when I was a kid, that was the the whole thing I was into. But now, young males. Yeah. But now I I I'm not sure that everyone's got that right. I reckon that kids today coming oh, up. Different. They don't care. Uh, yeah, and 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 I really don't think that if if when when someone in the AFL comes out over the summer, and I'm sure someone will, I reckon it's coming. Out. Well, I, I have reckon to it's much to their detriment that they're not. Yeah, but I reckon it'll be news for about a day, and mm-hmm. then ho hum, you know, ho hum. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, it just it, it tells us about the sport and its culture and the issues yeah. with it. Yeah. And um, the AFL's um, making making strides, but somehow or other it's and there was that four corners investigation into this, but it was it a lot of this stuff is not a secret that you can have your pride days, you can wave your bat, you can get your pronouns right and all of this, but what are you really doing where the rubber hits the road with the yeah, culture yeah. in your sport? And yeah. that's what needs addressing. And that's where we need much more work, and that's the kind of work I'm I'm asked to do. I've been talking to um, a lot of high performance coaches lately th- through the Australian Institute of Sport about this. But we're talking at high performance levels where there's not yeah. a lot of trans people. But yeah. once we get down the grassroots, um, what's it what's it like there in community sport for LGBTQ plus people, and uh, that's. That, that that's where I reckon the the where I reckon that the media and the corporate people and the AFL have completely got it wrong. I don't reckon kids at the grassroots level and their parents give a stuff if there's no. if there's well, queer it's people running around playing sport. Like the play soccer. Yeah. It's like you're yeah. in goals. And the oranges next week. <laughs> and, and, and and because they don't care at the Rooty Hill under elevens or at the yeah. uh, you know the, the the Sunshine West under fourteens, I don't reckon anyone will care when it happens in the AFL either. I just reckon people just don't care. And that, but there's always going to be a few bigots. But, but it's, there's, yeah, but you're always but there's in, only a minute yeah. amount of them now. Well, growing up with it, see, we've still got the generations who grew up with the, the bad schoolyard bullying and any LGBTQ plus person will tell you it's not what they said to you. It's what they made you believe about yourself. Yeah. And, and, and that's and, where the and, burden of pain is that you carry. And ostracising. I think that's that was one of the Well, the, well this is the fear that you're going yeah, to be laughed yeah. at, ridiculed, humiliated, ostracised. And because these are all the things if you already feel like that's what you deserve when you get it that's what's terrifying because then it 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 reinforces these terrible things that you think about yourself and suicide's not far away when you start to experience that kind of behavior around you so people are very reticent to come out if they don't think the culture's supportive and even though you can have all these pride days and things like that 
we need to be creating in, in clubs and in, in squads and groups a stronger a stronger set of cultural bonds that permit you to be gay, yeah. that permit you to be trans, and um, that just say, hey, you know, get on with it. You know, you know we all fart. Yeah, and, and 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 so to live in a culture where that's that's not a thing, you know, and it's and it's not a thing to be gay either, or, or you know, it's we need to be able to create that kind of a that kind of a relationship where we all get each other's little peccadilloes and we all know we got each other's back. Yeah, and I I I think I think we're getting we're getting there. Um, yeah, we are yeah, definitely because we can even talk about it now, but. Yeah. Once you start to get traction, then you just you want things to speed up, and that's exactly. That's right. exactly. Yeah. But anyway, this is not about birds, and I, I really, really only ever want to talk about birds. Yeah, well, uh, I I just wanted to uh, make the point because <laughs> it's not. quite topical, <laughs> quite topical at the moment, and because you mentioned it to me the other day that you were in. Uh, I, oh, I, the, I kind the, of thought I thought it was the the Hall of Fame, but no. I might, I might have said that because I, I might yeah. have thought that that's what it was all about, but it's definitely not. It's just there's a there's a little section in the Australian Museum of Sport that yeah. has some and, stuff, and I'm going to go down there eventually. I'll send them a little package of my medals and all the media clips and stuff like that, and they can do with it what they want. But it should go there. For, and for those who don't know. Uh, Ricky was a pretty highly credentialed athlete and is still involved in coaching and helping people achieve their their potential uh, in a field other greatness. than other than birds, as well as being the edu- uh, 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 an educator at Sydney Zoo and oh. being uh, being an an author. I got lots of balls in the air. I've got my birding, my bird watching business, my bird books, my um, my Sydney Zoo job, my coaching and giving talks um, to people in sport and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm I'm a very very busy person. And well, at five forty pm, who should have been gone at five fifteen pm? That's right. Well. Now we can go and watch the uh, we can go and watch the evening news. Won't that be fun? All right, everyone. Thanks so much, everyone, for the Facebook love and the uh, uh, and the Facebook likes, and everyone joining us uh, on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook, and even I did stream to Twitter, and I'm sure some people were on there, but that won't be happening uh, for much longer. So please do follow on YouTube if you have a YouTube account. Go to the Bird Emergency. Uh, is it the Bird Emergency or the Bird Emergency podcast? I can't. It's just the Bird Emergency. Go to go to YouTube because that's where I'm going to be concentrating a lot of the uh, a lot of the efforts. You can catch Ricky on next Wednesday at three o'clock. Uh, no, sorry, Tuesday. Next, next mm-hmm. Tuesday at three o'clock again, where we'll do this slightly less less shambolically. And of course, Holly is joining me midday on Monday for Monday with Holly, and then we'll almost be back to normal. Thanks again, Ricky. It's always great catching up. Love talking birds. Yeah, thank you. And thanks, and everyone, for being here and for your comments. Yeah, the comments uh, and, drive the and, show, so thanks yeah. so much. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, it's good. Uru, everyone. Bye. See ya. How do I get off here? I'm